What's going on guys this is andrew chicken and welcome back to another live stream we are live on the pts finally it has been released and it doesn't look like it at face value i mean nothing about this screams pts until we go to the champion selection and then we click on support oh well would you look at that it's emoji oh and it's the new skin too i forgot i had that equipped yeah we finally have the pts in our hands and so it's time to go over exactly everything that is in this update and the way we're going to do this here at the start of the stream is I'm going to show everything that's in this update listed on the patch notes, the new skins, all of that. But uh, we're going to do it kind of like how we do the uh, the patch notes videos, which you guys know those are recorded on stream. Uh, and then I upload them. I cut them up into a YouTube video and publish them on YouTube later. So I'll actually do a, a <laughs> another intro after the first intro that I, you, you already just saw. And that'll be the intro for the video. And then we'll get into the content, and it should be a blast. Uh, if you do want the patch notes, by the way, exclamation mark patch notes or exclamation mark update notes in the chat will be how you get that. So, um, yeah. All right, let me do the intro for the YouTube video, and yeah, we'll just get started with this. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Andrew Chicken, and welcome back to another video. We're recording this live on Twitch because we have the PTS here. It is live, and I'm going to show you absolutely everything that is in the brand new update. So... Yeah, we've got a bunch of skins, we've got support moji, oh my gosh, and uh, yeah, we've also got a bunch of other support battles, so let's jump right in. Support moji time, Yo. 315 shocked. Yes, support moji time, absolutely right. And uh, yeah, again, if you want the patch notes, I should probably update the title of the stream to put exclamation mark update notes. Uh, let me do that real quick. Update notes, there we go. So you can read along the patch notes if you want. Um... And yeah, let's just get started. So first of all, we have some skins. We have a new event pass, which uh, of course, in classic Evil Mojo fashion, uh, you can't see the skins in the event pass because <laughs> they're locked behind chests. But I can show you the skins here in the champion selection, and we'll also take a look at them in the uh, shooting range in a second. So we have Moji. Red ride and Moji and the big bad Okami. Yep, this is the new Moji skin, Red Raiden, and I forget what the other one's called, Az A Akazuken? Yeah, this is the recolor. We'll click on that in a second, but yeah, this is the new Moji skin, which, yeah, looks pretty neat. And then this Moji. is Akazuken, so more of a red, fiery version of this skin. And so yeah, that's the new Moji skin. Very good that she's getting another skin, because she has so few to work with, you know, and... Yeah, it makes sense also that she's getting rework, getting a skin. Pretty nice. Next up, we have Furia. Furia. And this 
is probably going to be the more popular skin of the two. Uh, this is Shrine Guardian Furia. This is the original version, which looks pretty good. We'll give it the old spin around here. Those wings are very fancy. And then, of course, we have the recolor, which is Shrine Demon. And this one is a little bit closer to the Abyss with the whole pink skin going on. Uh, and yeah, it's just the recolor version of this skin. Actually, I just realized the wings look exactly the same, don't they? But yeah, it is pretty interesting take on a Furious skin. So, yeah, there you go. Do you think Omen buffs are done well? Uh, we'll get to that. Or does he need a proper rework? We'll, we'll get we'll get to all the balance. Don't you worry. I, uh, yeah, I have to go into the shooting range and actually test that out. Um, <clears throat> all right. And then uh, there is one more skin, and it's actually for Bomb King. And this is not in the event pass. This is, I believe, a standalone purchase. And it is... The Crochet Crusader. <laughs> the Crochet Crusader. Uh, cuddly Bomb King. His head looks like a gumdrop. I cannot get that out of my mind. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Cuddly BK. Here to defeat Cuddly Yagroth, I guess. And uh, he's all sorts of silly. And I do really like the uh, the bombs as well. The Grumpy Bomb is like a pincushion. <laughs> so, yeah, new BK skin. Weird BK skin. All of BK skins are pretty weird, to be honest. So I guess this is par for the course. But uh, yeah, let's go into the shooting range now. And let's test out some of these new balance changes. And also showcase the skins as well in first person. Get the visual Wait, effects, get the sound effects, gone. all that wonderful stuff. And I guess we'll check out the skins first. Um, and then go from there. So we'll kind of go in reverse order. We'll start with a BK skin. And yeah, get some of these visual effects. I'm going to pause the music real quick. Turn the audio up so you can get a nice, clear sound for all of these effects. So, here we go. Boom! Oh! <laughs> it looks like they didn't fix that. <laughs> Whoops. All right, well, uh, <laughs> you get missing textures. Yay! Listen, it's the PTS. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure these will be fixed in the uh, the live game once this update gets pushed to the live servers. But uh, yeah, really smoky effects. And I'd say they're a bit distracting. They do look nice, but very robust, I suppose you could say. And uh, we'll also, since it's BK, just throw the bombs on the wall so you can see those. It's a really cute design, honestly. I do like the bombs on this skin a lot. But yeah, that needs some work. And then uh, we have the poppy bomb. So I'll just throw that at the wall as well. Yep. Poppy bomb. It sounds like the, uh, the, vi the sound effects are reusing Honey King. I don't know if they're just really similar or if they did reuse those sound effects, and if they did reuse those sound effects, I hope that's just a placeholder. I don't know. Anyways, here's the Grumpy. Now that definitely has a custom sound effect, so yeah, maybe... I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe they are just placeholders, but yeah, that's a pretty cool Grumpy. And lastly, let's check out the ultimate. <laughs> oh my gosh, the music. <laughs> Alright, that music's pretty good. And yeah. <laughs> That's about as silly as the uh, the Cuddly Yakroth skin, honestly. That's pretty cool. That's pretty nice. Bro plays this game so much he knows every skin sound effect. No, I play Bomb King enough that I know every sound effect. I'm a Bomb King main. If that was for a different character, I wouldn't be able to notice. <laughs> Alright, and let's check out the uh, voice lines, finally. Awesome sauce! You're amazing! <laughs> I've been conditioned by the new Ray skin to expect the, uh, you're amazing, you should join House Ico. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm the greatest hero ever! Awesome sauce! Fiddlesticks! Too bad. He sounds a lot like the digitized skin. He's got, like, a similar voice filter going on. Obviously it's different, but... <laughs> yeah, I guess it's sort of that similar vibe. Thing? Yeah. 
Anyways, next up, let's check out the Furious I skin. Spend these credits. So, yeah, do I have the recolor equipped? No, I have the original equipped. Okay, good. So yeah, this is the, uh, the Furious skin in action. Let's get a look at these visual effects. Here's the sword as well. Get a nice weapon inspect on that. The little beads are interesting. And... <laughs> that's an unusually long weapon inspect, honestly. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> little beads, little wrapped sword looking thing. And let's do a bit of shooting. It's got like a bell ringing effect on it. More me. Yeah, neat. And Not here's the balls. I should spend these credits. Oh, they're like the, uh... Oh, you know what? Those remind me of the little, uh, card things that Kiriko throws out in Overwatch. It's kind of like that. Similar vibe. Ooh. Nice. Uh, let's check out the beam. And I'm actually gonna... I'll, I'll do the base beam and then I'll do the solar blessing beam. Dang. It's a tornado of cards. Okay. And let's do solar blessing. Uh, let me get some resets. Please! That's pretty wicked. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Alright, and then, finally, of course, the ultimate. Let's see what this is like. Vengeance is not. Nice. Oh, I like the banner on top a lot. That is clean. And we got the wings. Nice. Really solid ultimate effects. She's got like the little, uh, like, uh, blossom petal things coming off too. That's, that's really cool. I like it. Pretty nice skin. And uh, yeah, last but not least, let's get some voice lines. That was awesome. You rock! I shine brighter than the rest. Demon spawn. That's too bad. Huh. You know, she... Is it weird to say her voice kind of reminds me of Tyra a little bit? It's kind of like a little bit rougher. It's nice. It fits the skin, honestly. <laughs> So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, let's move on to the final skin of the update now. And that is, of course, Moji, who's getting a lot of stuff this, uh, <laughs> this patch. Let me just, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll worry about the, uh, the rework later. Uh, let's take a look at the visual effects for this skin. So, yeah, we got Poli. Let's get the weapon inspect. The frickin' best part of Moji, the weapon inspect. Hands down one of the best weapon inspects in the game. Look at that, it's so cute! She sticks her thumb in his nose, though. Um, <laughs> wait a minute, can we get that again? <laughs> ah, just right up the old schnoz. Just <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's pretty cute. Uh, let's get the spray and the shoot effects. Oh dang, we got like the green little plus signs coming off. That's cool. And the spit. What a breath of fresh air. They always just, I don't know who does the visual effects leave a mojo, but they always do such a good job. It's always like the highlight of the skins for me. They look so good. Uh, let's check out the scamper. Okay, nothing super crazy there. And you can already see part of the rework in action. We just keep going. <laughs> Whee! Uh, and then the magic barrier. Alright, pretty, pretty standard. And of course, last but not least, the ultimate. a bit of a weird voice line. <laughs> and yeah, that's the treat. Yeah, pretty cool. And finally, the voice lines. Hiya! You're mythical! Fantastical! My story will be told for generations! Shiitake mushrooms! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our oh, voice for flood protected. Oh, Why? Their face well, okay. <laughs> I guess uh, pretty different to a lot of the voice packs we have in the game. That's for sure. Is that Evie? No, it's not Evie. It's it's Evie if she was like eight. Oh god. <laughs> well, that is the Moji skin. So now we can finally crack on with the balance. And of course, let me pull up the patch notes so I can actually remind myself. And remind you that if you want the patch notes, they'll be in the description of the video when this is on YouTube, and they are in the chat as well, just have to do the command. Uh, but yeah, let me check out the stuff that doesn't have to do with Moji or Support Balance first. 
Um, so yeah, there is... Oh yeah, there's some stuff I need to showcase outside of the shooting range. Let's go check that out first. So they've done a bit of an update to skin selectors to make them more like uh, the Star Sisters for certain characters. Uh, and I guess, what would be a good example of that? I guess we can go on over to Willow, since she's been changed recently. Yeah. And we can take a look at the new default Willow, right? So we have this little uh, rectangle thingy doohickey up here. And when you click on that, Willow. you have the option to choose between the true default skin, which is denoted by the crystal, or the regular recolor, which is this blue one. So instead of having the blue one just as a separate skin with its own rectangle like Golden Willow here, it's now bunched up into here, so it's exactly like the Star Sisters. Hopefully this means they'll bring back some of the recolors they removed from the game. In the past, I would like that. But uh, yeah, it's just to clean up a bit of the clutter here. And I suppose it's also very helpful for a character who has a lot of skins like uh, Maldamba. Maldamba. Who has a metric crap ton of skins. And then, yeah. Now we have the default and the orange one just uh, tied up into here. Although that does raise the question of why the golden one wasn't wrapped up into there as well. Because, you know, that's also a recolor. But hey, it's pretty nice. And also, uh, probably the most impactful... Victor. Uh, or the character most impacted by this change is now... Vic Code Green has the exact same sort of thing going on here. So you know how there are four of these plastic toy <laughs> soldier victors? Now they j work just like the Star Sisters. So you click this... We have the one with the binoculars, we have this, the, uh, whichever one this one is called, uh, the Grenadier, I'm pretty sure this one is, and then the just officer guy with the hat. So that's a really nice quality of life change, although otherwise the skins are exactly the same. And then, uh, yeah, also, we have a new player quest line, so I want to take a look at that, because this is meant to really improve the new player experience. So let me just see if I can find that. Is it in activities here? Uh, oh yeah, it is, right here. Okay, so you see this special quest right here that says, Welcome to Paladins, part one, Siege Basics. In the training tab, play three Siege training games and you get some gold. So you basically just complete these different quests. They'll unlock in order, I guess. Like once you complete one, you'll complete another, etc., etc. And if we just look at the actual patch notes here, we can take a look uh, more specifically at what this will do. So, yeah, we have play three matches of Siege training, play two training onslaught and team deathmatch, reach level five or equivalent to XP, and you get a free champion token. Make a loadout, you get some crystals, and reach level 20 or equivalent to XP, you unlock ranked, and you get one free champion token. So this is a way for new players to get completely free champions, which is really good, because it's really hard for a lot of new players to actually get their hands on a significant amount of champions because there are so many of them and they're so expensive. And you can see down here, they've also done some uh, price adjustments. So a lot of characters have gotten their prices completely cut in half. And you can just read this list and see which characters are impacted if you want. They're all older characters. So none of the new characters are going to be cheaper. Just characters like uh, Shaolin, Tyra, Moji, Koga, etc. And then finally, there are some uh, ranked requirement improvements as well. And I believe these were uh, teased in a previous, uh, like, uh, This Week in the Realm or something like that, where it says that uh, after watching the launch of Season 7 and hearing feedback, we've decided to uh, basically increase the ranked requirements for ranked. So the starting level is going from 15 to level 20, which doesn't seem like a lot, but apparently that is 75% additional XP that you'll need on your account to start ranked. Which means, as a new player, you have to spend a little bit more time learning the game and understanding how the game works to actually play ranked. And for the stinky people who want to smurf, then they also have to invest more time to actually get on that ranked grind. I think it's a good change, because, uh, yeah, there's a lot to learn in this game. And, well, new players, they need more time to actually understand how the game works before they get into ranked. And they also need more time to actually get more characters. And they're making getting new characters a lot easier as well. So all very, very good things. And then, uh, yeah, we also have limited time modes. So, Truly Talented is... I believe none of these are on the PTS right now. Yeah, none of these are on the PTS. But, uh, Truly Talented will be available from May 24th to 27th, so that's just in a few weeks. And this limited time mode will allow you to play old talents from the game's past, as well as some talents that were never released before, apparently. So, you're in Siege, you have a limited cast of older champions who actually had talents in the past, 
And yeah, they're bringing back stuff like Firing Line Khan, which Firing Line granted uh, basically Khan and his teammates, I think it was crowd control immunity and bonus damage if they were affected by his battle shout. Which is absurd. Uh, and Curse Revolver and Droxus is also back. That's cringe. But uh, that also means that really fun stuff that got removed, like uh, Wakono's Curse. I know it's a very popular one. There was the Drogo's Talent that allowed you to instantly fire Salvo. I believe that's coming back. Uh, Dragonfire Lance Fernando. Uh, Davy Jones Locker Makoa, the one that lets you basically roll on your belly infinitely. That one's back. So that'll be really interesting and really fun. And I can't wait to try that out. And then, May 31st to June 1st, Caught Lacking is the second limited time mode, and it basically turns Paladins into Overwatch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, there's no cauterized scaling. All champions have 35% anti-healing applied to them throughout the match passively, and Rejuvenate is disabled. So, it's basically like, what if healers healed less, but there is no passive cauterized to worry about? So, it's an interesting idea. I doubt it'll be that much fun, <laughs> but yeah, it's, a, I guess, a very interesting take on a limited time mode. But now, finally, I believe it's time to talk about some serious balance changes. So let's head into the shooting range, and let's get ready to show all this stuff off. Of course, starting with Moji. Although, before we do that, let me turn the audio back down so I can hear myself think. Yeah, there we go. And also... Uh, let's quickly show off the item balance before we get into the emoji changes. I know I just keep teasing you along. <laughs> Trust me, it'll be a good idea to get this out of the way, especially because all the item changes here are absolutely massive Ws. I Seriously, I think this is probably the most uncontroversially based thing of the patch. <laughs> it's, it's super good. So, armor plating. Got nerfed. It is now 300 credits. Same price as Kronos. Very nice. Make it harder to access the most overpowered item in the game. I like that a lot. Sentinel, as I'm sure you've noticed, has moved, and that's because it is now 200 credits, the exact same price as Unbound. You're the so, yeah, it's significantly less of an investment now to purchase this much more savory option. Super happy to see that. And then finally, thank you for the Prime sub, by the way, I appreciate that. We have Lethality, and Lethality has been buffed to last the same duration as its other fellow similar style items in the item store. So Trigger Scent would last for five seconds after getting an elimination, Sentinel would last for five seconds, and now Lethality also lasts for five seconds. So you get a nice movement speed boost, uh, and you really get good uptime on it as well. This item is like golden now. It is in the sweet spot. I think they've officially perfected Lethality, so that is awesome. But now it's finally, 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 holy, fine, fine, holy. Time to talk about Moji, who is the brand new support, kind of, technically. Is that how this works? Is she technically brand new if she's already been in the game for six years? I don't know. But she has been reworked into a support character, and so let's dive into exactly how this champion works. And, uh, yeah. So, the way... Uh, <clears throat> actually, let me restart. My brain's itchy. Hold on. <laughs> the way she works is that she... Basically, heals people, kind of like Spirit Summon Grok and Combat Medic Pip, where she uses her weapon as her primary form of healing. So, as I'm sure you can imagine, the spray heals people. Yay, look at that. And it also applies a magic mark to Fernando, so the marking mechanic has been shifted to teammates. And you can basically just shoot them like this to heal them up. So, Moji is now friendly. Yay, look at all the burst heals. And as you noticed, uh, when we put a mark on Fernando and then detonate it, it is 500, but then it also has a heal over time. So, yeah, 500 bursts, but then that heal over time brings it up to, what is it, like 800? Something like that, over the course of its duration. And the spray itself does a pretty good amount of healing. And when you're constantly just wailing away at somebody like Fernando here, you can see how easy it is to heal. Boom! 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 Yeah! Boom! Woohoo! Uh, but you do have a resource meter now, so the spray is the only thing that consumes the resource meter. The spit will not. And the spit is her primary form of actually attacking wow, enemies. Wow, you're like really good. You can basically shoot it out like that. I believe it explodes as well. Yeah, it explodes. So boom, boom is basically like a base kit thing. Now it basically works like a drogo's rocket. So that's neat, I guess. And yeah, that's 500 damage. There's no more marking on enemies now. But when you combine the spray and the spit, the spray will still do damage. You can still end up doing a decent amount of damage as well. Definitely not 
you know, the crazy damage that we've come to know and love from Moji. But on the bright side, it's now very consistent. So you don't have the inconsistency of getting like half a mark on somebody, barely doing damage, but then sometimes also getting a wallop of 1000 damage, but then also getting countered by someone who can cleanse marks, like Koga. And I believe also this means her damage is now better versus shields, because that's a consistent wallop of 500 damage every time you shoot. Right? Yeah? <laughs> also, one last thing. Check this out. Oop, never mind, it doesn't pierce. I thought it pierced. I thought they said it pierced. Cryptic. <laughs> Are we here? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> never mind, it doesn't pierce. Um, but yeah, then, as well, we can just, uh, oop, we can run into the wall, but yeah, we can just uh, infinitely scamper. So that's pretty cool. Pierces through allies. Oh, okay, so if I go over to Fernando here. <clears throat> yeah, there we go, so we pierce through allies, so I can, like, do this, and I can kill the Cassie through the Fernando. So you can do damage and you can heal at the same time. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. But yeah, this scamper is, uh... It's a bit goofy now. The animation... <laughs> I don't think was meant to loop like this. But it's pretty good mobility. Uh, mobility. It's kind of like uh, Victor's run, but different. And also in third person. And I'm healing myself. That's just from a card. It doesn't inherently heal. That's only a card effect. But theoretically, it can be, you know, much better mobility than current scamper. But that also means that bunny hopping is gone. Sadly. But I mean, you know, we can just go this fast now, so I guess it's probably better. Whoa, Fernando, chill. Let me show you another cool thing about the mark. At this range, yeah, you can see the mark briefly turned white. If I just go back here again, yeah, it's white. And you'll also notice if I detonate it, I got a burst heal. Did you see that? I'm getting affected by the mark. So this has a pretty massive AoE heal. Boom, look at that, I healed myself. So, detonating the magic mark will heal you. You can't get healed from your own spray, but, yeah, the magic mark basically acts like a bomb. So it's also, again, kind of like Boom Boom, but in base kit, but also for healing. And so that means she has really good area healing and also is able to have pretty good self-sustain. So that's something to keep in mind as Moji. Like, even if your teammate doesn't need healing but you do, you can just do this and heal yourself. So that's very nice uh, for self-sustain. But then lastly, uh, we have the Magic Barrier, and this ability allows you to summon shields onto Fernando. And it's basically a uh, an ability where you channel, you get a big burst of shield, uh, shielding, and then you regenerate some more shielding as you channel the ability. Just like this, you can also cancel it early if you choose. And the shield is, you know, kind of small, just like that. But... You have to bear in mind that it applies to all your teammates in a radius around you. So I can be all the way over here, provide Fernando with some shields, give him some heals. And, yeah, I believe if I double check the numbers here, let me scroll back up on the patch notes. So the magic shield applies a 500 shield uh, as soon as you cast it. And then it's an additional 100 being applied. Or excuse me, no, 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 excuse me. I misspoke. Uh, it's 100 applied instantly and 400 over two seconds, so it's 500 in total. But yeah, 500 shielding, potentially, to all your allies around you. And that's what it looks like to have the max shield. We basically go from 2400, was it? 2500? How much health do I have in this build? Yeah, 2500 up to 3000. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. We have a shielding-based ability on a support. <laughs> kind of uh, channeling a bit of Torvald action up in here. And it's crazy to think that that is... Um, yeah, just <laughs> AoE. It affects everybody. You can give a Torf bubble to everybody. And, geez, with how they nerfed Torvald's bubble, I mean, his bubble is almost at base down to 500 as well, too. So, yeah, that's that's pretty powerful. Pretty darn powerful. The last thing is her ultimate, and it has basically stayed the same. You ult somebody, they turn into a cookie, you eat them. But once you complete the animation, you get a nice burst heal. And that burst heal is... Uh, equivalent to 50% of your maximum health, and it ignores anti-healing. So, it's like Ray's ult, except, you know, you, it's selfish. You heal yourself, you don't heal your teammates. It doesn't provide damage immunity either, but, you know, you get to eat somebody and basically eliminate one player from the match. So, it's still a very powerful ability. But you'll notice that, well, it locks you out of your ability, so you're not able to do the magic barrier tech or the scamper tech with it. And Magic Bear also no longer provides you damage immunity. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot harder to confirm the cookie now.
but maybe Infinite Scamper will also make it easier. You can snipe, and then just woo, and then get the cookie. Yay. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's basically the thing that's stayed the most the same about this character. But now, let's look at the talents. So, I believe I was just using Jubilation there, which is her damage talent. It makes it so that your spray no longer slows you while firing, and it deals 35 damage a hit. So when you pick this, uh, you're able to do significantly more damage than Moji is normally able to do, and you don't have that self-slow penalty. So that's still a pretty decently quick kill, I would say. Yeah, it's not as bursty as flank Moji, but it's not bad. It's not bad for support, not at all. And it allows you to play aggressively. And also with the uh, new magic barrier, you can cast the shield behind a wall, and then engage as a support with 3,000 HP. So you can kind of power yourself up to get into the fight. So it's a different thought process of playing, but still pretty lethal. And then we have Spitshine, which is her main healing talent, it seems. It now heals allies for 250 and increases their movement speed by 20% when you hit someone with your base spit. So this is separate from the magic marks. If I just don't apply magic marks to Fernando and shoot him... You see it gives him that 250, so that's irrespective of the magic mark. But then when I max the magic mark on him, it goes to a 750 burst, because I'm, you know, stacking the 500 with the 250. So that's definitely her main heal talent, and it lets her do a lot of healing. <laughs> the numbers are pretty absurd. And then finally, we have Realm Runner, which is actually just Toot. So when entering Scamper, you leave behind a magical dust cloud... Uh, that applies a lingering heal for 600 healing over 3 seconds. The cloud lasts for 4 seconds. So we can grab that, and we can basically heal Fernando like this. So put down the field, cancel. And another thing you'll notice is that, well, hey, wait a minute. My scamper has a 4 second cooldown. The field lasts for 4 seconds. Oh, do you mean I can just spam this? Yes, you can spam this. So it'll also be a very interesting sort of healing playstyle for Moji. You know, scamper, cancel the scamper, and then scamper again, and just have those area heals. But it is also limited to just this area, so it's like kind of adding a Grok totem to your Moji gameplay a little bit. Try it with Kronos. Yeah, you can do it with Kronos too. Kronos, bam, just like that. And yeah, at that point, <laughs> I don't think we'll be able to stack the uh, scampers. But yeah, that's... Yeah, that's permanent uptime. Permanent uptime on the uh, the toot. So that is a pretty interesting talent, pretty interesting playstyle for Moji here. I'm not entirely sure how good Kronos will necessarily be on this character, though, considering she only has two cooldowns. And most of her healing comes from her resource meter here. But, I don't know. We have to discover the new Moji meta, of course. Uh, and now, let's check out the builds. So, let's just edit load out here. And look at some of these cards. So, some of these cards remain the same, like Fluffy is still a max HP card, but a lot of them have been changed. So, Symbiotic now increases your Sparkle capacity by 6%. That's your healing beam. Peppy generates ultimate charge when triggering Magic Mark at max stacks, so you can kind of spam ults a little bit. Uh, Willow the Wisp, I think, is the same. Movement speed after getting an Elim. Still probably a bad card. Nature's Blessing. Allies gain 5% movement speed. For three seconds after being healed by Sparkle. And Sparkle is your spit. Which, it actually still says spit right here. I guess that's technically an oversight, but it makes sense, so I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you also have Morning Breath, which is the opposite. Enemies hit by Sparkle are slowed by 5%. Only for half a second, though. So significantly less duration. Uh, but yeah, it's still slow, so I guess that's pretty neat. <laughs> and uh, then we have Greater Good, and this card is very spicy. When an ally receives max magic marks, they gain a 20 health shield while marked. So I actually prepared a build for this. Uh, if we just grab Spitshine and this build, which has Greater Good at level 5, we can basically give Fernando a shield. And then when that pops, we can give him another shield. And then give him another shield. And, yeah, you'll see it does expire when we hit him and disable the mark. But, we're still potentially able to give a lot of extra shielding output here. And, if he's constantly getting shot while I'm constantly shooting at him, that shielding will end up being a little bit of extra healing, you could say. And, bear in mind, Guardian. 
max that out. Magic Barrier. And then we also benefit from Guardian with this card. And we're able to get a lot of shielding numbers. So, this is an interesting card, card to uh, keep an eye on, for sure. But, yeah. <laughs> you can potentially be shield bot moji? Is that a thing? I don't know. Anyways, uh, let's keep looking at the cards. So, we have Dense Woods, just increase the duration of your magic marks. Theoretically would synergize with greater good, but you also wouldn't want to detonate your marks then. I don't know, maybe a playstyle will emerge with Dense Woods somehow, I doubt it, but yeah, that's the thing. Then the Magic Shield cards. Uh, these are pretty interesting too. So we have Cozy, Magic Shield heals allies for 6 every quarter of a second while it's being channeled. That seems weak. 30 every quarter of a second, so we're looking at 120 healing per second while being channeled. That's... I mean, I guess it is a card, so it's not meant to be like a main source of healing, but it is, I guess, a way to supplement your healing if you want and spam even more numbers out of this character. Then we have Glimmer, which reduces Magic Shield's cooldown by, well, one second when detonating a, magic, uh, a max stack magic mark, and that is a two second internal cooldown. So we can run this. Why can't I save and exit this? Did I already have that card in my build? Oh, I did, right. So yeah, we can pop this. And then, boom, just like that. Get the cooldown proc, detonate. Oh, wait, I actually have to detonate it first. But yeah, then we can do that, and then we can get another magic shield. So... Actually, is the internal cooldown even working? It doesn't look like it's working. It looks like I'm just... <laughs> it looks like I'm just getting it every single time. That's pretty crazy. But yeah, regardless, it's a very good card for getting uptime on your magic shield. Even if it does have an internal cooldown. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that seems a bit broken, Cryptic. Yeah, <laughs> need to fix that. But yeah, uh, the cards keep getting interesting. Honestly, I really like all these Magic Shield cards. They all seem well thought out from the standpoint of actually making it so you're having interesting loadout options here and really being a support. Even if, the, uh, even if they're a bit broken. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have Harmonious. This card is... Uh, I think the first percent-based ammo restore that we have in the game. So this lets you regenerate 7% sparkle and ammo for affected allies every quarter of a second when channeling Magic Shield. So that would work out to, well, 7 times 4. That is, uh, embarrassing. 28, yeah. <laughs> there we go, it took me a second. My brain's itchy, I'm sorry. I need more water. Ugh. But yeah, 28% per second. So, yeah, and that's a two-second channel. So you can basically restore half of a teammate's ammo back with this card at level five. And let's just test that out. Let me drain my sparkle and let's see how that feels. All right, do that. <laughs> she said they had some plot armor. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, that regenerated it very quickly. Let me compare that to the base rate. Yeah, that definitely made me regenerate a lot quicker. So we can basically, like, empty... And then pop this, and we stack the card with the base regen rate to get a full clip back as soon as the magic barrier is down. So, and yeah, you can imagine, because it's percent base, that this would be really, 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 really good with a character like Ruckus, Rom, anyone who has a very high ammo output, even someone like Koga. Like, Koga could pop agility, run in, and then Moji could be right behind him, press magic shield, and he would never have to reload. So this would be, th this seems like a very interesting card, very situational, because there are some characters you just don't want to use this with. But yeah, I really like this, because we don't have that much ammo regeneration in this game as a supporting capability, and so I think this is really cool. And then we have Shimmering. Allies affected by Magic Shield gain 15% crowd control resistance for 4 seconds, and that is universal. It's not, you know, with the CC split, like with Unbound versus Sentinel. No, it's just raw CC resistance. 15% seems kind of low. You might consider buffing it up to 20. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I feel like this might run into the issue of being unused in the same way as Lilith's card that grants CC resistance, but who knows? Maybe it'll be good. At the very least, all four of these Magic Shield cards are really unique, and I like having unique cards, so I'm super happy to see that. And then finally for Scamper. These are all generic <laughs> kind of uninspired but also you know it's it's fine they're still good cards nonetheless we have boop which gives up to 40 percent movement speed for two seconds after using scamper which with the uptime that scamper has is almost permanent uptime when you have chronos three so that's a pretty nifty movement speed boost if you want to constantly be spamming scamper uh and then we have c 
Scoot, which gives damage reduction during Scamper, kind of like Genesis card. Scurry, which grants healing while using Scamper. And then we have Wobbles, which grants up to 50% slow resistance while using Scamper. Now, I don't necessarily know how good this card is going to be, but I guess it's there if you want. So, yeah, <laughs> pretty nifty, I suppose. And that's all of her cards, that's all of her talents, that's everything. So we will play this character uh, a bit later, but we still have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of balance changes to cover. Every single support has been changed. So, yeah, let's keep things moving. Thank you for the tier one sub. I feel like I might have forgotten a few subs earlier. If you subbed and I didn't recognize you, I'm sorry, but I really appreciate it. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a bit busy covering the content. I'm bad at paying attention. Um, <clears throat> also, dang, someone's pinging me in the balance spot. Oh boy. <laughs> Useless pings. Okay, I don't actually need to care. Uh, let's go in order. Uh, alphabetical order when it comes to these supports here. So that means up first, we will be starting with Corvus, who is just getting a flat nerf this patch to both his healing and his damage output. So I'm going to pick Dark Gift's main support build just <laughs> as a baseline. So what happened to this guy is his Abyssal Reconstruction has just gotten a flat nerf from an 800 burst heal to a 700 burst heal. So you can see that here. Stop dying, you 700 friend. instead of 800. And if we put a mark, the mark brings it up to 805. And that's a direct mark with Dark Gifts. And uh, I mean, I don't think Shadow Tribunal... Yeah, Shadow Tribunal doesn't help with that. But yeah, that's basically... That's the max mark heal you're going to get now. But then, also, they have nerfed his damage output. And this is a bit less straightforward because you might think it's a damage buff but it's actually not um so they increase the damage per shot from 74 to 75 but they decrease the fire rate from 0.07 to 0.075 and the way the math works out you had a really ugly number previously that was like 1047 damage per second or something stupid like that now the number is nice and clean but it has gone down he now only does a thousand healing per second or a thousand damage per second, excuse me. Fall before me. However, the slightly decreased fire rate will mean you are, I suppose, slightly more efficient. More impact per bullet. Slightly slowed fire rate. Less reloading? Maybe? Possibly? Potentially? He still does very good damage. 1,000 damage per second is very high for support. But, yeah, it is still nerfed. The healing is nerfed. Corvus, I think, is one of the only supports this patch who just got flat out, like, <laughs> wrecked. Because <laughs> um, a lot of other supports got like trade-offs. They got some nerfs, some buffs. Speaking of, up next we have Furia. So, this is one of those rare patches where Furia is actually one of the supports who got the fewest changes. Normally, she gets like, <laughs> she gets like, what, one talent rework every two patches? It's crazy how much they toy around with this character. But uh, they have buffed the damage of the Fireblade. Thank goodness for that. When they removed uh, keywords from this character... <laughs> They forgot to set her base damage value back up to the number that it was pre-keywords. Uh, so, yeah, she was just doing straight up less damage than she was pre-keywords. Now that's been fixed. Back up to 330. Just, uh, it's so satisfying. I'm so glad they did this. It just, it feels right, man. It feels good. And that does mean Exterminate is relatively a lot better now. Do I have Pyre Regeneration in this build? Oh, no, I don't. Okay, well. <laughs> but yeah, it does mean Exterminate is better. And then we also did get a buff to the Wings of Wrath damage per orb going from 200 to 300, so they just straight up increased that by 50%. Boom. 900 damage dealt to Ying, and dead. But they did nerf the healing on Kindle Souls, so it's just a small nerf. They took the healing over time portion of the heal from 400 down to 300. So we just pop this on Fernando. Wow, that was jittery. <laughs> And, yeah, it's slightly less healing over time. I feel stronger. So, yeah, that's all they did to Furia. Very simple. Very straightforward. Very nice. Uh, next up, we have Grok. And, just like Furia, they fixed his lightning staff. Mwah! His staff now starts at 70. Just the way it's supposed to. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, it's just so good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The Grok main in me is very, very satisfied by this change. It, it's just, Grok should never be below 70. That's just not right. That's the, that's just, that's just bad. Uh, but to compensate, they did nerf his healing totem. And this is actually a bit of a weird change in the sense that some of his descriptions in the live patch, if you go and look, 
say that his totem heals for 325, but they're actually healing for 380. And now, the healing has been decreased from that 380 down to the listed value of 325. So if we just put a totem on Fernando here, you see it's between 32 and 35 instead of being 38 per tick. So definitely a substantial nerf to the totems. Uh, but he is still going to be healing for 975 healing per second if you put the totems uh, all three on top of each other. And so that's still roughly 1,000 healing per second in a large area of effect with the movement speed card. So I don't think it'll affect him too much. Plus the damage buff is really going to help him out, especially when playing Totemic Ward. So yeah, very nice. I'm glad to see that. And you'll notice this is basically a trend with all the supports that a lot of healing is going slightly down, but then damage is going slightly up. So they're trying to make them less heal body and more able to support their team in other ways. Next up, we have Grover. Now, this one is a bit uh, lengthy because keywords are gone. Look, there's no keywords. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of changes they've done to, uh, to compensate for this. So first of all, Rampant Blooming, you'll notice, actually got buffed. Uh, from 300 base heal to 400 base heal and 200 heal over time to 250 heal over time. But of course the keyword is removed, so I guess it's roughly about the same, kind of, but also not really, because 300 to 400 is a lot more than just 20%. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's just, that's basically the only talent change. The other talents remain exactly the same, uh, they just had their keywords removed. But then, the, f the throwing axe, at base, now, uh, does 385 damage instead of 350. So that's the starting damage that it scales from. Oof, and you have to be, like, literally in melee range to get that value of 385. As soon as you step back here, even to this range, he's now doing 400 damage for Axe, which is so nice. So, so nice. And uh, if we just head over here, I mean... I won't be able to hit that, but I'll be able to hit that. We're looking at... Yeah, precisely 770 damage is the max axe damage now at base. And I'm sure you're wondering, how does that feel with Ferocity? Well, let's pick Ferocity. Throw an axe at Vic. 1,001 damage is the maximum damage you can do with Grover Axe now. So I believe this does mean Ferocity now is doing more damage than it was previously. I'm sure someone in the chat can remind me of how much damage he did with a max axe with keywords, but I think it was below 1,000 barely. It was like 950, something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, and you can scale it with trigger scent too. Yeah, let me buy some of that. Boom, and uh, let's get a kill. Bop, bop, bop. Rampage. Bop. Oh, 1,070. Woo! <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I'm glad to see Ferocity actually do damage. That's nice. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he still has more changes, though. So the Blossom at base actually took some pretty hard nerfs. Uh, so not only are keywords removed from Rampant Blooming, but the base Blossom has gone down, which I didn't expect them to do that. But uh, yeah, you'll see the passive healing has been reduced from 75 to 70. Very small, hardly noticeable change. But then look at this. Womp. 500 burst heal, are you kidding me? What? Yeah, they took the burst healing from 600 down to 500. But they did increase the healing over time from 285 to 350. But overall, that is still a net nerf to the amount of healing it does. And also specifically when you're playing Grover in late game and you only have a split second to heal someone before Cauterize gets reapplied. Because he has less burst healing now, uh, that's going to make him a little bit less impactful when you're trying to give someone that crucial burst that they need. And now, Rampant Blooming and the Blossom are closer than they've ever been in terms of their healing output. I mean, look at this. You tell me which one is the real Blossom. Boom. Boom. Dude, they look the same. <laughs> so, he's even more dependent on Rampant Blooming now, I would say for healing output, because that's where the majority of your healing is going to come from these days. The pickup build is going to go crazy. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the right way to really tackle this character, because I think it would be nice if he could play Ferocity or Deep Roots comfortably and not be so dependent on this, but that's the way they've done it. And then finally, they have nerfed his ultimate ever so slightly. Uh, the initial cost on activation is now 50% instead of 40%. So it's a little bit harder to 
use the ult for a temporary burst of healing, cancel it early, and get a lot of ultimate refunded. You'll get a little bit less refunded now, so you'll have to be a bit more careful with the ultimate. But yeah, that's uh, a lot of Grova changes. Very spicy. Next up, we have Io. So Io has gotten similar treatment in the sense of she's gotten damage buff and uh, healing nerfs. So let's just grab Goddess Blessing, typical stuff here. And let's check this out. So her light bow now deals 425 damage instead of 400. Four, five, six, okay. <laughs> I don't know if that really changes any kill thresholds or not, but it is a damage buff nonetheless, meaning that when you're not channeling your heal, you are doing more damage, which is good. However, Moonlight has been nerfed. So it's gone back down to the value that it was for a while, which is 135 instead of 150. So a little bit less impactful, still very good healing output. And you can still, you know, combine it with Luna heals, combine it with the buffs from uh, Goddess Blessing. But yeah, it is weaker now, so yeah. <laughs> Welcome to healing nerfs. Uh, Guardian Spirit also does more damage now and has a lower stun cooldown. So if we move Luna over here, she will now be doing 200 damage with the first and second hit, up from 180. And the stun now has a 15 second cooldown, and you can see it tick down on the bottom left there. Just going to be rising a little bit faster, and then once it's back at full, you'll be able to stun again. <laughs> it's still kind of long, isn't it? Uh, there we go. And stun. So that was just three seconds sooner than it was previously. And now, Be Gone also does more damage. So this is up from 800 to a 1,000 burst. So lots of damage buffs for Io, really trying to make her less of a heal bot. Uh, next up is Genos, and he also, he is another character who's gotten some really spicy changes. Kind of like Grover, except probably way better. <laughs> Grover, or, uh, Genos is going to be a lot stronger this patch, and that's because we'll take a look at these cards. Astral Cycle and Retrograde have both been completely reworked. These were the boring cards that let you have a lower cooldown on the Astral Mark and a higher duration on the Astral Mark. Now, Astral Cycle, this one looks very strong. It applies a 20% movement speed boost for 6 seconds to the target ally. Meaning Genos now has a buff. He is no longer a really bad heal bot. He's now, okay, a really bad healer, but a character who's able to provide some very powerful and consistent buffs. That movement speed boost is going to be pretty huge. Yeah, 6 seconds. 6 second duration. You could just walk around anywhere and move faster for 6 seconds. So that's very powerful. But again, Genos is a really bad healer, so it's not like you're going to have crazy healing output with that, too. And then Retrograde gives Genos a 200 health shield for 4 seconds to the target ally. You're not going to buy Guardian on this character, I can assure you that. But it's a little bit of an extra boost to your healing. And if that Fernando could walk, he would be very happy. Because he would be moving faster. But yeah, look at that shield. <laughs> oh boy, imagine that with Torvald Pocket. Oh god, wait, no. Wait, no. Why did I say that? No. Forget uh, Forget. I just suggested that you could run this with a Torvald Pocket. Shh. Anyways, <clears throat> he also got some other buffs. Um, and really just shifts, I guess. Um, so Astromark, uh, you can't run those cooldown cards or duration cards anymore. They've just been put into base kit at a medium level. And what that looks like is now Astromark has a 6 second cooldown with a 12 second duration. So... Not quite as powerful of a cooldown or as powerful of a duration as you would have previously with those cards both maxed out. Uh, and that's to compensate for the fact that, yeah, he's got these really sick new cards now that make him a lot stronger. But what if you don't want to play Genos as a healer or a support? What if you want to play him as a damage? Well, I'm sure the astute players among you have already realized. This does 400 damage now. Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> What? Nothing is as savory. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Okay, Genos. <laughs> what was this value previously? This was 360 previously, so he gets 40 extra damage per shot now on Binary Star. Making this the official damage talent for Genos. It's no longer a side grade to his base Star Splitter. It now does a lot more damage than the base Star Splitter, and controller players are about to have a field day with this character. And 
one might even envision a future where you play Binary Star as the support. Meaning, you play Binary Star, you get the extra damage, you apply the movement speed boost to your teammates and the shield to your teammates, and that helps them win. And you're sort of like this hybrid utility support thing, amalgamation of death, and you do a lot of damage, and you get the kills, and this is uh, scary. Genos is definitely, I would say, back on the menu as a reasonable support. No longer bottom tier, high rank, right down with Ceres. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty crazy. And uh, lastly, there's also one more damage bonus. Uh, Void Grip now does a 200 burst on cast at the cost of less damage over time, but the damage is still higher if you're in the Void Grip for the full duration. So it's a 200 burst heal. The damage over time went from 360 down to 200, but it means it's doing 400 damage now up from, uh, yeah, 360. So, yeah, that's pretty neat. And, yeah, I guess you could also stack it with Power Cosmium. I wonder how that works. Oh, it's a long cooldown. Oh my gosh. Die! <laughs> Hold on. Alright, here we go. Okay, so it went up to 240 burst and does 60 damage over time. Neat. Basically, this will really help out once the enemies buy Unbound for your Void Grip uh, and let you get a little bit more damage in, whereas previously it would do no damage and it would also barely interrupt them. Next, uh, we have Lilith. Oh boy, this is a whole book. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> she almost got as many changes as Moji. This is crazy. Let's break it down for you, chat. So, this character is, first and foremost, no longer a tank. What? <laughs> I have Blood Cannon at level 5 right now, and I have 2,700 HP. So, significantly reduced HP, and if you look at the patch notes, her base HP has been reduced from 750 to 500, and the blood HP has been reduced by a staggering 500 hit points, from 2,500 down to 2,000. Uh, but, she now is able to compensate for that by having a little bit more self-sustain. So, she has an addition to her passive now, where whenever a blood hex ally gets an elimination, Lilith will basically heal for 750 passively. So that's just a bit of kill to heal. Theoretically, you could stack it with Bloodbath, although I'm not sure how good of an investment that would be, because Bloodbath is still trash. But, yeah, that's cool. That's more extra self-sustain. Just hack somebody, they get kills, you get healed, more swarms, lovely. Uh, and they've also modified her Blood Hex regeneration. They've kind of standardized it, honestly. Uh, so the way it works now is, if you hex an enemy, you will regenerate uh, 20 blood, or, uh, wait, blood at 20, scaling by 10 cap of 210 every 0.5 seconds. Um, okay, so what that means is it starts at 20, I believe. Just throw a swarm over there. And then, yeah, it increases by 10 every single tick. And it ticks up every half a second. Uh, previously, it started at 12, scaled by 2, but scaled up every 0.25 seconds. It was all very confusing. Uh, and if you hex an ally... It's exactly the same Take now, flight. except it starts at 40, uh, and scales by 10 up to a cap of 230 every half a second. So it's actually, I guess it's a lot, uh, I, I guess it's a lot uh, safer now to hex an enemy. They're basically the same, except hexing a teammate starts slightly higher and has a slightly higher cap, but they're both very similar now. And uh, when it comes to hexing allies in particular, it seems like it has been nerfed pretty substantially. Because it started at 55 previously, scaled by 12, and had a cap of 295 with the same tick rate of every half a second. So hexing allies is worse now, but you also have that kill to heal to make up for it. Hexing enemies is now better, is the long and short of it. It's confusing. <laughs> um, and then, uh, she also got a damage buff, slightly. Uh, Heart of Crimson now does 25 extra damage. 650 now. Nice clean 4 tap. Uh, and then, yeah, Blood Hex. Also, it looks like it does more damage too. So it went from 1.5% every 0.325 seconds to 1.25% every quarter of a second. Slightly faster damage. And you can see that on Victor. It's still kind of small, isn't it? But... You know, you can res restore some ammo from it, I guess. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, anyways. Uh, it looks like they also 
nerf the ceiling, if I understand this correctly, from 25 per tick down to 20 per tick. So let's just put it on Fernando and see what happens. Boom! 100, 120, 140, 160. That definitely looks weaker. Fernando! Come on, man! Oh, he's living it! He's living it! And it caps out at 500 now. Okay. What happened to my swarm? Wait, does it eventually expire if you just hold it long enough? Or am I crazy? Okay, I don't know what just happened. Anyways. Uh, Swarm also got some changes. Blood cost now scales based on charge. From 500 base to 800 at max charge. So, if you look at my health. And I just pop a base Swarm. I don't really take that much damage. Puts me down to 2200 and I'm quickly regenerating some of it. Uh, and yeah, that's just how that works, I guess. Uh, but if I charge up to max, you'll see my health will go down. Slightly dips. Why am I healing? Oh, is it because I'm in... Wait. Why was I healing? What is happening? I'm so confused. I don't know. It does more damage. That's the point. That's all you need to understand. So, I believe now the max charge swarm is the same cost as the swarm just was previously. But if you do a smaller charge swarm, it will just cost less. So it should be a bit easier to manage your uh, blood health, theoretically, maybe. And they also did some changes to the numbers. So the stage one swarm has been reduced from 75 damage, 55 healing to 60 damage and 50 healing. Stage two has gone from 105 of both to 90 uh, damage and 70 healing. And stage three has gone from 160 damage and 125 healing to 150 damage and 110 healing. So also, yeah, really just a lot of nerfs across the board to Lilith when it looks when you when you when it comes to her just raw numbers. Yikes. Uh and then I guess Deathwing's also got a blood cost reduction from 350 to 280. There we go. My goodness. This character is so complicated. <laughs> a lot of changes to chew through, and also I don't know what's causing my heal rate like this. Considering I'm in combat. I, I'm con I'm so confused. <laughs> ah! <clears throat> you got the damage and healing numbers the other way around? Are they backwards? Let me put a max charge swarm out here. 110. Oh, yeah, those are backwards. <laughs> On the patch notes here, you see it says uh, from left to right. So it says 75 damage on stage 1, 55 healing. So the number on the left is supposed to be the damage, but if you look at stage 3, it went from a, it went down to 150 and 110. 110 is the damage number, but it's listed as the healing number here. So yeah, those numbers are backwards. Whoops. <laughs> okay. Well, everything I just said applies, but in reverse. Yay! Oh boy, but on top of all this, it just keeps going. This is so much to handle, and... I'm just, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, because I barely understand Lilith, and <laughs> I don't even know what some of these card changes are going to end up being, but uh, let's just go through them. So Blood Cannon has been reworked, as you can see. It no longer has the trade-off of reducing your base health to increase your blood health, and you'll notice the scaling is significantly lowered as a result. So it's just a flat 250 increase to your blood health at level 5, which is just straight up regular scaling for health card for a character like a support or damage character they just scale up by 50. so just a regular old health card now nothing fancy but it will give you more blood health to work with uh then we have enriched blood which is this card this i don't uh stealthy you're gonna have to help me remembering what these cards did previously because I, <laughs> I couldn't tell you <laughs> yeah um, but yeah, this now increases the duration of Swarm by up to 1.25 seconds. That's all it does. So, yay, duration increase. Woohoo. Uh, next, we have Overflowing Delights, which removed the penalty to Swarm cost on card. Now reads, increase the radius of Swarm by 2%. So I believe this made it more expensive to, ca uh, to cast. Now it just increases the radius of Swarm. It's still so tiny, though. 10% at level 5. I don't know if it's worth it. But, uh, enriched blood increased damage and healing by 4%, but reduced duration. It's the complete opposite. Now it increases duration. It does nothing else. Okay. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't have told you that. <laughs> Lilith is one of those supports that just goes over my head, man. 
I guess I'll leave it to the Lilith mains to tell you whether that's good or not. I, uh, on paper, it sounds pretty good to me. Let me just put it in this build real quick and see. Uh, let me go over to Fernando yeah, and see okay. how I can <laughs> double stack swarms if that's possible. I think I need some more credits, These though. Want I want to get Chronos 3 and just see what that's like. Whoa, I got Guardian 3 replacing my Chronos 3. Hello? Uh, <laughs> uh but please. Can I buy Chronos? Do I have Chronos? What is happening right now with my credits? I guess I think I have all my items now. It, this is bugging tremendously. Let's just try this out. So we put a swarm on Fernando. Beware. And then we put a swarm on Fernando. Ew. The biggest nerf Lilith received for my flank playstyle is the rework to Wings of Terror. But they're discussing about reverting that change, thankfully. Hmm. Well, that's uh, pretty cool. As you can see. <laughs> Very easy to double stack swarms right now. Maybe that's why they nerfed the values so much. I don't know. Uh, what were you saying about cards? Uh... The biggest nerf is the rework to Wings of Terror. I guess we'll get to that later. We haven't covered that card yet. Uh, okay, Symbiotic Relationship. Rework to allies gain lifesteal while standing in your swarm. Once again, you're going to have to remind me what that card did previously. I don't know, man. I don't play Lilith. Uh, but then Wings of Terror. That I know that one was the, uh, the distance card, because I used that recently in a damage build. And that is changed to increase the radius of the reactivation. Yeah, I see why that's a problem, Stealthy. That kind of sucks. That was a, that was a good card. That was a fun card. Yeah. Okay. Symbiotic relation used to increase healing of swarm, but increased cost. Okay. So they basically got rid of a lot of these trade-offs and just made them have different effects outright. Enriched blood seems a lot more helpful now, to me personally. And symbiotic relationship, I guess, is still giving the increased healing, but in a different way. Where it's going to scale a lot better on characters who have good healing output. Uh, or good damage output, right? It's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, and then finally... Alright, that's all the card reworks. So now, uh, it's time to show off... I I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. This new talent looks terrible. <laughs> this looks pretty bad. Curse of the Cord. Your blood can regenerate to full out of combat. Blood is gained out of combat twice as fast. <laughs> that, that, that looks like veteran. Did, did we really just give her an item as a talent? Is this the, is this the Azan persistence treatment? Oh gosh, let me take some damage here. Oh, oh, that does kill me. Oop, that, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> I was like, I could take an extra shot, right? No, I can't. <laughs> okay, uh, hold on. One, two, three. Okay, Whew. get out of there. Let's see how this heal rate is. <laughs> We're still going. <laughs> Dude, that's even. That's so much worse than I thought. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, Maelstrom of Carnage, uh, and Meditation. Mm, yes. Alright, uh, shoot me. Shoot me! Oh, oh, oh. Alright, look at this. Oh. Ta-da! Mmm. <laughs> mmm. No, this is not it, folks. This is this is no, dude. There's no way this ships into live servers, right? This is <laughs> guys. Don't don't do the Azan treatment to this character. That's so bad. That's that. No, no, no. At least she still has Maelstrom of Carnage and Murderous Intent, being interesting talent ideas. Also, Murderous Intent with the damage bonus. Hello. Yeah. Boom. Uh, yes, I am remembering how this talent works. Yeah! Fire rate increase with the 650 damage. That's pretty cool, I guess. Yikes. Anyways, that's it for the Lilith changes. Um, oh boy. <laughs> Lilith mains, you can have a field day just 
trying to figure out what's going on here. I will leave that to you. Lilith is just one of those characters that I do not touch. She's like Agroth. I just... Not for me. Not for me. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, we have to check out, up next, Maldamba. Ah, one of my favorite characters. And he got uh, a buff and also technically is... that a... Uh, I'm not sure what the Mending Spirits change is, honestly. But uh, he does the same damage as Io still. So both of them went up to 425 from 400. Yay! Dude, my spirit's chosen gameplay is about to be elevated with this. Look at all this damage, booyah! Well, bam! Oh, stunned! Yes. So that's that's awesome. Uh, but then Mending Spirits. Okay, so the increment of healing has been slowed from 1.25 to 1.6. So slower heal rate. The heal length has been increased from 2 to 3 seconds, so it's less bursty. But the cooldown has gone down from 3 seconds to 2.5 seconds. So it delivers the same amount of healing. It delivers it slower, but you can use it more. This seems like a net buff to me. No chronos, mind you, right now, because I have weirdness with the items. And we're back up to maintaining 100% uptime on the duration of the heal. But yeah, no overlap. And... Actually, wait, no, technically there is an overlap, because it's a two and a half second uh, cooldown with a three second duration. With Chronos, that'll be more like a two second cooldown. So I guess we're back to overlapping heals with Damba again. And yeah, this will end up being a raw healing buff to him in the sense that more cooldowns means more healing. So yeah, just straight up Damba buffs. That's cool, I, I guess. <laughs> I'm really excited for the damage buff. I'm confused by the heal buff, but uh, yeah, I will absolutely take this. Oh man, look at that damage. Beautiful. Let me reset the shooting range real quick. I need to get the items fixed and reset and stuff. Here we go. Hmm. Let me take a drink real quick. Hmm. Okay. Well, next up, we have Pip. Get ready for this, guys. Keywords have been removed. Moving on to the next champion who got balance changes, we have Ray. <laughs> okay, no, uh, yeah, he, he literally just got keywords removed. That's that's all it says here. It's, it's just keywords. That's it. It's honestly kind of beautiful, really, uh, how balanced Pip is. That they can just remove keywords and we're fine. Uh, and honestly, also, as a uh, as an official Boomer Paladins player, I'm very, very happy that we're back to 1,000 health potions. Just nice and clean. Throw it on, Fernando. Oh, it's 1,000 perfectly. And guess what? It's also 600 damage. So clean. Oh. Those are the numbers that Azan, Genos, Io, all the gods, this is, this is what they intended for Pip. And so I'm happy we're back to that. Even if, yeah, it does mean technically Pip just got net nerfs this patch. Anyways, now let's move on to uh, way more spicy changes. Way more spicy changes, some might say. Uh, we have... Actually, on paper, it doesn't look like that many changes, right? Until you realize they have completely reworked Extension. And they actually renamed it, too. That was not listed on the patch notes. It's still listed as Extension there. Uh, but it is now Ambidextrous. Yield Chain has two charges, but bounces 25% slower. Phew. Okay. Um, this is spicy. On top of that, just real quick, she also got a damage bo uh, bonus from 450 to 475. Four and five. So that's nice. And then Chain Heal, it did also get a nerf, and this is... Yeah, going to hurt her other playstyles a bit more than it will Extension, because now obviously Extension has two charges. But it went from 600 at base and 780 for a linked ally, to 550 at base and 715 on a linked ally. So let's check this out. Let's just put the link on Fernando, and... You can definitely tell that's slower, but then we get another chain heal. And then we get another chain... Wait. And then we get... Wait a minute. I'm not... I'm not even shooting for the, uh, the, the magic in the blood proc. 
And eventually it slows down a little bit. But, oof. That is a lot of uptime. It seems like they are just... Oof. They have a really low cooldown or are decreasing simultaneously or something like that. Some, something has gone horribly crazy here. <laughs> this is like Healbot Ray. I am not struggling to keep this Fernando alive at all. I haven't had to use extension. Or uh, envelop, I mean, excuse me. Okay, so... I guess what we can do then for extension is get rid of this card entirely because that's completely irrelevant. Uh, we'll swap in Refreshing Break, put this at level 5, put this at level 4, 5, yeah, we'll put that at level 5, we'll put Lepori Prayer in here, why the heck not. Um, and yeah, use ult, and then let's just bounce and... <laughs> Ultimate generation! Let's get some Chronos. Let's see how this feels with Max Chronos. Mm. And my ultimate is just going up. Look at that. Because of the healing I'm doing, but also because whenever it bounces to me. We get the ultimate charge. We're providing damage reduction to Fernando, so he takes less damage. This is... This looks kind of broken. I'm not going to lie. Maybe it'll be more balanced in a regular match, but this is silly. It's certainly better than old extension, that is for sure. And I'm glad they renamed it too, because you're gonna have a lot of old, like, outdated posts saying extension is trash. This, this is not trash. This is, like, the opposite of trash. This is insane. We'll definitely keep an eye on this and test this in a real match for sure. Anyways, uh, moving on from Ray, that is all she got. A few changes, but a few very powerful, impactful changes. After that, we have Saris. We're getting close to the end of the roster here. So Saris, it looks like, has gotten mostly raw buffs. So, yeah. Let's just take a look at Agony first. It didn't get a change. It just got a description update to make it a bit clearer for people. So it now says, For each stack of Soul Orb detonated by Ren Soul, Restore Soul heals an additional 5% true healing, excluding healing disable effects, up to 25% for 10 seconds. So, yeah, <laughs> that's the accurate description of this talent now to reflect what it was previously doing. Uh, and the reason why they did this is because the previous description made it seem like only your next heal would be affected by the bonus. So you would basically do something like this, detonate, and it made it seem like just this first resource will be affected by the damage bonus, when it was, in fact, the next one and the next one, etc. for 10 seconds that would be affected by this healing increase. The only thing Agony is missing now is a UI indicator, you know? Get a little circle thing here, make it green instead of purple to differentiate it from Soul Collector, and just have a have a number here showing how much your buff is scaled, right? Whether you have one, two, three, four, five, etc. cetera. Uh, so that would be great. But functionally, they have not changed Agony at all. It still heals for the exact same amount Everything is the same, it's just a description update. Uh, but then, let's get into the actual buffs now. As you just saw there, Restore Soul does a burst of 400 damage now, so it's just 100 damage per stack instead of 90 damage per stack. So if we just spread out a few stacks here, you see the different damage numbers. It's clean, I like it. And then, uh, Restore Soul also... Gives Sarah's apparently 20% damage reduction during the duration. So, if I pop over here, take damage, I heal myself for a little bit from my heal, and I think that appears to be maybe work. King, did it work? No, let me let me try this. I I need this to be a bit more clear. Let me take Blood Pact out, and let me just do the raw thing. <laughs> Okay, that took me down to 1520. So Cassie does 680 damage, meaning... Actually, I don't think that's working. Or am I a numpty and did I read the wrong ability? No, it is bugged. Okay, okay. So it's bugged. But once that's there, I guess that'll make Saris a bit even easier to play. <laughs> Yay. And then Convergence uh, does damage now. Gone are the days of Saris players. Not shooting the entire match and getting a score of 10 damage at the end because they hit their ult once. Nope. <laughs> Convergence does real damage now. 200, in fact. 
So just a bit of extra priming and damage when you hit somebody with the ultimate uh, to make it feel a little bit more impactful. So, yay. <laughs> How many of you even knew that it did 10 damage in the first place? It technically did damage before, now it just does a whole lot more. That's cool. Uh, I, I guess, yeah, that's nice. Makes the ultimate better. Her ultimate's already pretty good. I don't think it'll really impact too much for the character, but I guess we combine that 200 damage with the increased damage bonus to Renzel, and then also play Soul Collector, you might be getting somewhere with some damage Saras here. So, that's neat. Very neat. And then the final support to be changed is Ying. Kind of ending off on a mundane note here, if I'm being 100% honest, but that's okay. <laughs> so, uh, she got three changes. Uh, a healing nerf, a healing nerf, and a damage buff. That's just, that's the paradigm of this update, I guess. Uh, so yeah, Life Exchange now does 700 healing instead of 800. Yay! Fernando is still getting healed, wait. Is my Ray Link with that card that I was using in my build still persisting? I... I <laughs> okay, that... Uh, that's, that's a new one. Right. But yeah, life exchange to 700 now. Healing nerf, honestly, totally understand it. Illusions, also. Down to 80 per tick. So healing decrease from 450 to 400. You can still stack three of them up on the field at any given time. And if you just focus heals like this... I mean, come on, it's still getting heals. It hurts, definitely, don't get me wrong. This will majorly impact her healing output, but... She's still, I think, going to be one of the most powerful heal bots in the game. And also remember... Because basically every single support in the game is getting a shift down in their healing department, that means that Ying is still relatively one of the strongest, if not the strongest, healbots out there. So, yeah, it looks kind of rough on paper, and it is rough, technically, but proportionally, she'll still be very, very strong, I think. Especially because, check this out, Illusory Mirror now does 500 damage per shot, up from 450. 100 per burst now. Boom, look at that. So four shots will deal exactly 2,000 damage. And then, yeah, the fifth shot will kill. And that's going to be pretty scary, especially if you don't have damage reduction versus that, and you're playing someone who is right at that threshold of 2,000 health, right? Now she's going to be four-tapping you. Uh, so that's, yeah, I, I guess pretty neat. And also, of course, we have to test it with focusing ones. This is going to do 700 damage per shot now, because you had the 200 bonus. I'm sorry, Ooh, 300! Oh, look at that. Not quite a three shot on a character such as Ying or Victor, but when you're doing 700 damage per shot with Ying now, especially with his fire rate, that's going to three shot anyone with 2100 HP or less. EV mains beware of uh, aimbotting Yings, I guess. <laughs> but also, more seriously, anyone with a low health pool, be afraid of focusing on Ying now. Especially on controller. You get that aim assist on this? Oh boy. So that's, I guess, uh, kind of a nice note to end off on when it comes to our support balance. However, we're not done yet. Uh, we still have some champion balance. Three champions in particular to talk about, and there are still some pretty massive changes. So let's actually get the most boring one out of the way first. I'm skipping around a little Don't bit, but Sky got a smoke and dagger nerf. We all saw this coming. Uh, they have basically reverted the healing buff they gave it because uh, it didn't need a healing buff to begin with. Honestly, that was kind of silly. So it's now back to healing for 100 every second while in smokescreen. That's all they've done to it. Very simple, very straightforward. Let me make sure I'm pairing this with a heal build. Boom. And here's the new healing value on Fernando. Wow. That's still really good. <laughs> and yeah, also, I mean, the main thing you pick Smoke and Dagger for is actually to give them movement speed bonus to your teammates. As well as, yeah, some pretty good supplementary healing. So it's still going to be very strong. Nothing more to say about that. Now let's get into the real changes. Sati oh, has had, you could argue, a soft rework. Uh, so her pip system is dramatically changed. And she also got a new talent. So let's just go to improvise just to get a baseline for this character. Uh, the pip system now causes Sati to generate one pip for every three successful hand cannon shots. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Cryptic, this also counts shields and deployables as uh, successful hits for your pip generation. That is true, correct? Um, 
So yeah, we can just spam some coins, and then one, two, three. Uh, yep, we're generating pips a lot faster now. And we're back up to full. Throw some more coins out. And yeah, if we just stop shooting for a little bit, look at the baseline pip regeneration. It's very slow. So you can see we are building pips a lot faster. So that's pretty interesting. And yes, shields and deployables, including coin, will count as successful hits. So very forgiving on what you can hit. Uh, and yeah, the passive pip generation has actually decreased from 2.65 seconds to 3 seconds. So it's slower than it was last patch. You're a lot more incentivized now to hit your shots. That's pretty good. Uh, and the old fire rate increase was integrated into base kit regardless of pips. So part of the old passive was that uh, you would get an increased fire rate, I believe, when you were above 4 if I remember correctly. It was either that or the movement speed increase. I think the movement speed increase is below four. I don't know, I don't play Sati. Uh, but yeah, they basically put that into base kit, so now her hand cannon has a fire rate of 0.5 seconds, regardless of your pips. And it also got some range increases. So its effective range has been increased by 10 from 80 to 90, and the max range has been increased to 225. Higher so <laughs> yeah, I can still hit Vic right about here, doing 212 damage. And I believe the red should tell us when we're able to hit max effective range. Does that look like about 80 to 90 units? It kind of does. Right here. And we're doing full damage. Step back. Fall off. So, yeah, that's cool. But it's not all buffs. I'm sure you already noticed. Ricochet now costs three pips instead of two. So it's a bit harder to spam the coin. And also, the blast back will cost five. So you can no longer double blast back back to back. Now you have to shoot enemies, and then you can get your second blast back. However, her decoy has remained the same at four. So now each of her abilities has a unique pip cost. Bam, put that down, that's four. Easy. Uh, and then I guess we can take a look at the talent because that's the last thing to discuss. Heads or tails is gone. Yay! Uh, but it's still a coin-based talent. So, Ricochet now costs two pips and generates one pip for every six, uh, four successful hits against opponents. So, yeah, you throw the coin up and you generate pips a bit faster. So, let me expend most of them and just shoot. Yay! So, so, so this playstyle is still a thing where you sit in the back and spam the coin. And I still resent that. Very much. But at least you're not hitting two people now, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the coin. You guys know I hate the coin. But I do think the overall rework to the pip system is pretty positive. Because it's going to make Window of Opportunity a little bit more balanced without really taking away any of the potency. This is still very strong. But it's less spammable, and you have to hit your shots consistently in order to use the blast back consistently. And also, I will take a nerf to the coin any day, reducing that to three, or increasing that to three rather. Heck yeah, I like that. Because <laughs> the coin is stupid in its current state. So, yeah. Neat. Anyways, uh, the final change we have to discuss now is to Omen. And, well, our prayers have been answered. Omen is fixed. We should make an exception. He's just fixed. So I'm going to click on Binary Void. Let's get a normal build here. No more. No funny business. And just show you the new base shotgun. So specifically what they've done is they have increased the effective range and the max range. But that's not really the important thing here. The important thing here is, is they have changed the damage per pellet and the spread to function similar to every other shotgun in the game. Furia, Buck, Barrack, etc. So if you hit less than 50% of the pellets, it deals 50% damage. If you hit more than 50% of the pellets, you deal 100% damage. So he is now completely consistent. Look at that spread, right? You see on the wall there? And even though we weren't hitting 50% of the pellets there, we're still dealing, dealing consistent damage. It's not all over the place. Where one time we hit full damage, one time we hit 150, the next time we hit 63 for some inconceivable reason. <laughs> it's now much more consistent. There's still a little bit of variation. But if we just pop back here, 
Boom. We go down into that slow ramped up fire rate. It's a lot more consistent. The shotgun is consistent. It's just, it's just plain consistent. <laughs> so, yeah, they fixed the shotgun. Just straight up. It's good now. It's fixed. And to compensate, obviously, as you can see, they have nerfed the damage from 500 down to 450. But he's still doing a lot of damage with this fire rate. And I think that is perfectly reasonable and acceptable, considering that now the shotgun works again. And I believe this also means that... Uh... Okay, so if we go into the rifle stance, the winded down phase, we can still potentially clip a target and not hit full damage, but it's up to 225 from, I think, 63 it was previously, so I guess that's good? I kind of hoped that would just completely fix it outright, but I guess it hasn't. But yeah, that's pretty nice. Boom! Yay! Damage. But that's not where it stops, because uh, we also have... A nice, really, really nice fix to Gravity Vice. Uh, if you guys remember my Omen video, I pointed out that Gravity Vice does not actually apply a cripple. It's some sort of weird other thing that it does where it's able to cancel abilities without being a cripple, which makes no sense. And I and many others hypothesized that it was the cause of many of the lockouts that Omen was experiencing, where you could grip somebody, they would go ethereal or something, and it would prevent you from using her abilities. But now, if you look at the Ing, pay very close attention, you'll see an arrow applied to her for a very brief amount of time. That little orange arrow that appeared above her, that is the cripple status effect. Hopefully this fixes him, and the lockout. Hopefully. Maybe. Possibly. Potentially. <laughs> Maybe there'll still be a way to lock this character out, I don't know. But I hope that this helps. That would be really great. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have Umber Lance, which has really gotten a massive buff. So they have removed the fire rate penalty outright, completely. No more fire rate penalty. And its spread has been reduced by a further uh, 20%, from 50% down to 70%. So we can grab this, and look at that. Very tight spread. It's almost back to being the previous Umber Lance. Now you'll notice this fire rate is still pretty slow. That's because it's still using the fire rate of the totally winded down uh, rifle stance, right? The uh, aphotic reaver or whatever it's called. I never remember the names of these things. Uh, but yeah. That is going to be very consistent damage, especially when applied with the new buff they did to a spread. Look at how far away we're still doing good damage to Ying. But if I'm a little bit less accurate, you'll notice I am still able to get that 225. But this is so much better. You're not penalizing your DPS with the fire rate decrease. And look at how much more consistent this damage is. <laughs> okay, Stealthy. Uh, trigger sent five. Not Bam. For the price. Umber Lance and... Uh, is this five? No. Where's my five build? I don't have a five build. Okay, well, I'll edit this build. More five. Actually, I don't even necessarily... Ah, whatever, I'll use it. Okay, there we go. There's that. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Nice. Yeah. It's not going to feel as powerful. Bear in mind, more, more, more gets nerfed pretty hard by the fact that his base damage got nerfed because it's a percent base effect. So it's 540 now instead of 600, I believe it was previously. Oh, yeah. Omen is just so much more consistent now. Hopefully the lockout is completely gone. That whole bug, hopefully that's just vanished now. He should be so uh, much more consistent to play. My pockets are empty. Which means he's playable now. So that is very, very good for this character. Very huge. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we won't have to put him in D tier anymore, I don't think. I don't know where he'll end up in the meta, but not bad anymore. I think we can say that for sure. And that's it. Those are all the changes. Every single balance change finally done and dusted. Let me double check and make sure I didn't forget anything else in terms of other stuff. We went over the rank requirements, limited time modes, new player quest line, skin changes. And yeah, we showed off all the skins, all the cards, the mojury work. So yeah, that's basically it for the update. Now Twitch, I'm gonna record an outro here for YouTube. So, yeah, just, <laughs> I'm not going to end the stream yet, uh, but just bear that in mind, uh, this, this is about to be the outro portion, okay? 
Warning out of the way. <clears throat> but yeah, let me know what you think about all of these changes, of course, in the comment section down below. I'm sure there will be a lot of crazy discourse about the Moji rework, about the Lilith rework, about Sati, Omen, all the supports. There's so much crazy balance happening this update. And uh, yeah, there's also some good quality of life stuff in there too, you know, for new players, new limited time modes, that's always welcome. So yeah, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And lastly, if you want to support the channel, uh, please consider buying your crystals for this upcoming event pass at the Nexus, nexus.gg slash Chicken. Let me pull that up for you real quick. Take a look at this bad boy. Boom. You can buy the season pass, crystals, DLC, all this wonderful stuff, and support the channel directly in the process. So if you're looking for your crystals to buy the new Moji skin, buy the new Fury skin, or even the BK skin, buy it here. You support me directly. I'd really appreciate it. But with all that being said, thank you guys for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace out. Yay! We did it. <clears throat> Bomb King. Da -na, da -na, da -na -na. Yeah! All right. Well, there we go. That's that done and dusted. Heck yeah. <clears throat> Crazy update. Now I get to read chat more. Well. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> With the support heal nerf, support damage buffs, and armor plating costs increase, seems like TTK mo might go down quite a bit overall. Thoughts on this? Is this, is this what most players want? It's definitely what I want. <laughs> I, I have thought it's been just a little bit too high recently and i don't think it'll be extreme the difference in ttk i think it'll ultimately feel pretty comfortable armor plating is still going to be as strong as it was it's just going to be less accessible so you'll still see people buy it plenty but it'll come at more of a cost to them and they likely won't be able to max it out as much they'll have to weigh their options more carefully and less DR does mean that healing is less powerful, and then when stacked with these healing nerves, yeah, it's a uh, it, it will be noticeable. But I don't think it's gonna kill the game. I don't think you're gonna see like <laughs> Overwatch one TTK anytime soon. And you could see from some of the changes we were testing in the shooting range, yeah, cauterize wasn't applied obviously, but many healers are still very strong including moji she was able to do a lot of healing like a lot a lot of healing there's a shield icon during most dr effects to show you if andrew wants to show it on vatum 3p can wait what cryptic is there something not listed in the patch notes that i need to show <laughs> what <laughs> why why are we doing this member. okay uh vatu let's use uh i guess omnipresence this build with double dr Go into third person. Oh yeah, look at that. So when I pop the dash, you can see that shield on me. That's the phase I have DR, and if I do this... That shows the duration of the DR card. That's pretty cool. Nice. What happens if I buy armor plating? Nothing happens, arcane, nothing happens. So it's just card effects, I guess. That's pretty cool. Does that show in first person as well? Hmm, it doesn't show in first person. Okay. So I guess it's just for other players to tell. Honestly, I think it would be really nice if there was some sort of HUD element that would show you the duration of, like, cards and also internal cooldowns. There's technically one for internal cooldowns, but it's really buggy. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't work. Um... But yeah, that, that would be really nice. Like, just some sort of subtle little thing. You could put, like, an icon of the card or something. And then just a little timer. Kind of like how Warframe does it, honestly. It would be nice. But yeah, Tyra. <laughs> Tyra, come here. Mercy kill. Um, I don't know why this has question marks on it. Oh, probably because of Bandolier. Okay. Uh, third person. Bam! 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> I permanently have a shield! Yes! Oh, it actually expired. Hold on. Oh, I know why I put a question mark on this build, because it doesn't have the cooldown reduction card. The right one. Primal Might. There we go. Fix that. Ah, there we go. That's much better. Just the way Tyro was meant to be played. <laughs> Look at how much better cooldown reduction I have there. Boom. Oh, it's beautiful. 
That's a nice addition. I don't know why that wasn't listed in the patch notes. That's sad. <laughs> Anyways, uh, now I guess that's everything. Huh? I think I should be more noticeable. I think it's noticeable enough. It's about as subtle as many other effects like cripple, slow, etc. And you don't want there to be too much visual clutter. Anyways, um, I think I'm going to take a very brief break. And then we'll probably get like one or two customs. I'm not able to play that much uh, tonight. Because I've started stream late because the BTS was late. I have things to do. But uh, we'll try and get in like one or two games once I'm done with the quick BRB thing. And I'll definitely stream either tomorrow or Sunday. We'll try and find a time. And uh, we'll get a lot of games in then. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I'll be right back. Just a minute. And then we'll get a custom game together for people to play. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. And I saw a message, yeah. Wish it was a slightly different shade of color because it looks like a debuff. That's a good point. It might look a little bit better if it was blue to show it's like a defensive buff. I don't know. I guess it's a good thought to consider. But yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and make a custom game here. So I would like to play Moji for this first match just to get some good video footage of her for all the people who can't play her on the YouTube channel, right? So this first match we'll do Moji, and then we'll probably do one more match after this and I'll just play something else. But uh, we'll do it, why not? We'll do it on Bazaar. And yeah, I'll just do a, yeah, I don't, I don't think I need a password. Let's just go. So remember, you have to be on the PTS to join. This is PTS, not live servers, even though it looks like live servers. Also, I see, I see Dr. Foka in here. Are you in the chat, Romano? Dr. Foka? Because I, I would love to hear your thoughts. You are always the first person I think of when I think of Emoji Main. So, yeah, it, it would <laughs> it would be nice to hear what you think about this rework, honestly. Ascension Peak for next map. Sure. Ascension Peak for the next map. Oh, Bray, they... Ogre, Ogre, Ogre. <laughs> ogre, Ogre, Ogre. Uh, they didn't do anything to Vatu, Bray. Uh, I was playing Vatu to show the new uh, visual effect they added whenever a DR buff is active to a player. So Vatu has DR cards and DR on dash, and that's what I was showing. I can't see your game. Is that because I'm in Europe? Yeah, we're on NA right now. Which, I thought they shut down the PTS in EU. I, I thought that hasn't been a thing for the past few years. <laughs> okay. Why haven't you put on crossplay? Oh, the crossplay thing is just bugged and weird. I'm never sure if I should turn it on or off. Sometimes it seems like people join just fine with it off. The weird toggle. Customs are weird. Don't worry about it. We need one more person. Oh, there we go. Hey, all right. Let's try and do some semblance of matchmaking here. Yo, we got Goblin in here? I'm taking Goblin on my team. Uh, whoa, hey. Oh, okay, Stealthy, I guess you can stay. 
Uh, I'll put you over there. And that should be cool. Yeah, let's go. So yeah, like I said, my team, I want Moji. <laughs> Just one hey, match, that's all I ask. There we go, Quickly. thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're so yeah, this is, no this is support what? Moji, that baby. With a new skin, too. Aha! <sighs> this is gonna be Snitsky crazy. Snitsky donated one dollar. I'll tip 20 if you manage to win with the worst cards for Moji. How, how do you even determine what the worst cards are? <laughs> she, this is the first match. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <clears throat> I I I don't even have. I, I I just I don't even I don't even know how that would work right now. This is this is PTS support rework emoji. This is not old emoji. And her mythical Anyways, we've got triple support here. Enemies have double support. Bear in mind, emoji support. Yes. Looks like both teams are trying out the Genos buffs. We'll see if they're playing Binary Star. That's what I would play, honestly. And we'll see if they use the skins as well. Oh, look at that border. That is a really pretty border. I like that a lot. Let's all make it That's like Ascension Peak themed, together. too. That's really cute. Nice. Anyways, uh, I guess we have triple support, so I probably don't necessarily need to all play the, the main healer talent. I don't want to play damage Moji because it's the first match of Moji. We got to treat her like a support. Uh, there's also Realm Runner. That sounds interesting to test because we can leave a heal cloud behind. It can give me some self sustain. It seems interesting. The Let's try it. Realm begin. Runner. And I have this shield build, which has greater good and glimmer at level 5. And I want to see what happens when we buy Guardian with this new magic barrier and with all this extra shield uptime. Because that seems spicy. Focus going for Spit Shine. Cozy for extra healing. Harmonious for a bit of ammo gen. Glimmer for shield reset. And movement speed buff. So he's got a more support buff focused build. I've got the shield focused build. This'll be a very nifty match. Alright, there we can throw that up there. And bear in mind, chat, when you see someone with a magic mark and they're green. I am in range of the area of effect, and I will get healed. It looks like there is a line of sight requirement, because it didn't heal questioning today, so. But yeah, it, uh, for my teammates as well, if they are in the green radius, that means they are in range of the area of effect. Whenever you detonate a magic mark, it's like Boom Boom, the old Moji town. But when it's purple like on a Winzy right there, that was out of range, so. Whoa, I'm up in the sky. All right, I popped the shield. I kind of forgot to do that <laughs> at the start. I'm too busy trying to figure out what's going on right now. All right, let's use the scamper. I gotta remember, that's on a much lower cooldown now, so I can just spam that out for the healing pool. So let's pop this, give some shields to Fernando, and then, I mean, that's kind of a bad spot for a toot, but he walked into it anyways, got some heals. I got another one here. Huge Geno Assault. Let me give some shields to the team. It looks like the shields don't go through walls either, so there is a line of sight requirement. That's pretty huge. Ah. But yeah, I believe... Yeah, okay, so even when we're not directly in combat, I can still just... I can spam these magic marks to get cooldown reduction. If I can actually hit Questionator anyways, there we go. And because of my card, I get reset on the magic barrier, so I can give more shields. That's cool. That's good to know. Oh, here, take this. Uh-oh. Wait, can I snack time the enemy emoji? Oh my gosh, if I could snack on Roman Ulfoka, oh, I'd be amazing. Emoji ult emoji main. Looks like I need to ult you right now. Oh, you got thrown away! He got thrown away! I thought that was Geno's Void Grip. That was Omen Void Grip. Oh, I just got scammed. No. <laughs> okay. Let's get more Guardian. We do manage to cap, so that is awesome. I need to do a better job of spamming shields, though. That's kind of the purpose of this build that I wanted to test. So let's get... Let's get locked in. Let's focus. Let's Romanul focus. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that was actually kind of struggling to apply to uh, Goblin there as well, but we got a bunch of shields for everybody. And then, yeah, do this. Reset cooldowns, and then I can get another shield for everybody. And look at that, that's like an AoE Torvald pocket. Holy crap. Alright, and then reset it again. And give a bit of heal to you. Give more shields out. The payload blocked a little bit of that shield on fear, but we can keep just powering them up like that. That is insane. And detonate both of those, and now I can do the shields again. Nice. 
Yeah, that's really neat. And now I'm really dead. Where did that Yagroth come from? Jeez, I just got wrecked by something. Okay. Let's get Guardian 3. We have that maxed out now. The fullest test of Shield Moji. I think I'll get some Chronos as well. Just to really crank things to the max. Okay. Oh, Stealthy, can you get out of there? No! Alright, let's use the infinite scamper and run the heck away. Goodbye, Yag. You can't chase me. Haha. -ha. We actually just run away. It's like I'm on a mount. <laughs> yes! Okay, there we go. And now, let's get some more heals out. Boom. And let's power up everyone with a shield. There we go. That's pretty chunky. Spam. Need to get more cooldown reduction. There we go. Let's pop this again. Give the movement, or, uh, give the shield buffs. There we go. And we just crushed all of them, and I can just catch up to Fernando. That infinite scamper feels pretty nice, actually. I like that. Also, yeah, I can just I can just give everybody shields. Wait, because <laughs> my card. If I just get them at max marks, I can do that. And I can pop this as well. And we just push it through. Wow, nice. This feels a bit scuffed because sometimes we just wipe their team and then they disappear for a little bit, but. It's pretty, it's going pretty well. How do you think Moji is going to be in sumos? Oh, I think she's going to be overpowered in sumos. She combines Yagaroth's Execute Ultimate with some of the best area healing in the game, and she can give AoE Torf Pockets. She's probably an instant S tier, honestly. But yeah, I mean, this seems pretty strong, but also you have to do, you, you do have to bear in mind, we are playing unorthodox team comps. Because we have triple support, they have double support. You don't usually see that. You don't usually see Yagaroth solo tank. So, you might take some of this effectiveness with a grain of salt, but... Yeah, it's still, I, I'd say, a pretty fun first test. And yeah, again, you can see I'm not in range of the Fernando Ailey right now. Alright, let me get some shields! Alright, come back here, and... Alright, he's ulting. Let me give him some heals. Let me throw a Toot Cloud down. Uh, I don't like that. Let me pop Magic Barrier. Ooh, hello. Well, I'm definitely dead here. We don't have damage. Yikes. Okay. Sucks no Bunny Hop, though. Yeah, no Bunny Hop. And they also got rid of the Ultimate Tech and the Magic Barrier Tech. That is a bit of a shame. But there is a lot that's actually, I guess, a little bit different with how you play her. With the Infant Scamper and the new sort of shield buffing she can do. Huge shield. Let's scamper back to point as quickly as possible. And... Ah, uh, she actually landed back on the ramp, so I wasn't able to hit that. I thought she would land down below. That's where I predicted it. Whoops. Sati's pretty disgusting still. All that damage. I mean, she certainly hasn't gotten any weaker in that department. Just knock me up. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay, so the match goes on. Let me heal you. Let me get some shields. Cancel it early so I can run away, but I'm actually just dead. Wow, Omen does disgusting damage, too. I'm so used to the mindset of popping Magic Barrier whenever I want to get a, basically get out of jail free card. Damage immunity, just walk away. I can't do that anymore. I have to keep that in mind. Like, that positioning would have been okay for previous Moji. It's not okay for me now. I just die. All right. Uh, uh, oh, he's out of range for the shield. And he's getting gripped above all my marks, so I can't hit him. They keep just popping him up. Come back here. No, he's dead. Okay. I can't keep him alive. Just so far up. We need to group up. All right, let's get some shields. There you go. We got the Fury Ult. Push in. Actually, don't. There's a giant beam of death there. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Uh, you're fine. Get some of that to you. Let's get some more shields out. Nice. Double kill. Huge. Test her damage up put here versus Gagroth. It's probably going to be pretty bad. Can help kill her, though. All right, let me give more shields. The nice thing about giving shields is I can give my teammates each HP even when my resource meter is down. It's temporary, but it helps. <laughs> what is she shooting at? Is there a ghost over there? <laughs> okay. And also, I don't need to detonate the mark. I can just leave it there. And then detonate, like, when I need it, you know? So I should probably get a bit better at doing that, but also like priming people with marks so I can give them first heal, like, before they enter the fight, right? There you go, there's that. Give you that, boom. Get some heals out there. And also, her uh, spit pierces through teammates, so I think you can detonate multiple marks at the same time if you get them lined up. 
And yeah, it has that AoE, so man, it's just a lot of healing. <laughs> okay. I need to use shield again. Remember, use the actual ability that Moji has. Okay, do not step into the dark. Please stay alive. Give more shields. Brando's got three healers on him. He should be okay. Ooh, got the Foca! Yes! Let's go! Hey, Delta! Come here! Yeah! Damage Moji! Let's go! And just in case, here's some shields. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, this is a very silly experience. I wish we didn't have triple support so I could, I guess, be forced to try a bit harder. Uh, but at the same time, I guess it's also, you know, a bit of a safety net. I can learn Moji and not have my team completely fall over, so, I don't know. Uh, let's do Chronos Dose. There we go. <sighs> We'd we'll love to know what you think about the Genos buff. I missed if you said anything about it. Uh, yeah, I tested it earlier in the shooting range. It seems like he is very strong now. Because even though his healing is still very, very bad, he is able to provide the movement speed boost now. And if you play Binary Star, he also does a lot of damage. And that shield also seems interesting as an extra way to supplement the health he gives to the team without it being healing. And it can technically be countered by Wrecker. Also doesn't scale very well with Guardian. Hey, nice! So yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. There's no way I have enough damage to take you out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Fernando. I can't save you. All right, let me heal you up. And... Oop, hello. Okay. I need to pop shields. Try and save myself here. Omen's doing a lot of damage. But I can scamper back in. And theoretically, in theory, I can just stun her there. Although it looks like she's fine. I actually, I just wanted to test and see if it's still Santiago like that. It does. I'm dead to Saucy, man. I cannot escape. They are all over us. That's the downside of having triple support. And also, Genos didn't play Binary Star, so we really are lagging on damage right now. And they cap again. Yep. Come back, mechanic. Ugh. Another thing to bear in mind about the shields is that, you know, because they're not healing, they don't get affected by Cauterize. They do get affected by Raka. So the enemies are buying Wrecker for Fernando, and that creates an interesting dynamic where, you know, I give them, you know, 500 shielding every time I press this button. More like 700 shielding with Guardian. But then, because they have Wrecker, it ends up taking more damage, so it's also like its own version of Cauterize. But if they didn't have, you know, Wrecker, then that shield health would actually be a lot more valuable in late game. Alright, we need to get the heck out of here. Question what are you doing so far up? We gotta group up. You don't just push in when the tank is dead. Goblin, stay alive. All right, there's some heals. Uh, oh, I ran out of thing. All right, let me give you some shields. And then, oh, you just gotta get back into spawn, man. Three supports can't keep Fernando alive. Ah, uh, there's just too much damage. I'm trying to make a touch for point. We just don't have it. This is not a failure to heal the team. This is a failure to do any sort of real damage. <laughs> oh boy. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure why we picked Luminary instead of Binary Star. They picked Binary Star and they're clearly paying dividends. Eight kill streak? Wow. You're not using the Scamper Cloud much? Yeah, I'm not using as much as I thought. That's probably just skill issue, honestly. I should be spamming it more. But also, it does come at the trade-off of it being my movement ability, so sometimes I don't really want to use my movement ability. That creates a bit of a dilemma. Okay, let's go. We gotta win this now. It's three to three. If we don't capture this objective, we lose. Come on, guys. Let's get good at the game. All right, I'm gonna prime you with one of these, and then let's pop shield ability to give you even more shields. So you can go in. JK, I'm just gonna die to Satsi. Where's our damage output? Oh, well, Omen's just dead. Okay. Uh, I need shields. There's shields. Uh, do some healing to you. Yag's back. I just need to run. Oh boy. Why is she singing Frozen? Did you guys hear that? Yo, huge Genos ult. Nice. Oh man, Fury is just dead though. Alright, stay alive. Here's some shields. I gotta hit an actual good ult. Okay, there we go. We got Genos. We give you some magic marks. Give you that shield. Alright, there you go. There's that. Burst heals. More shields. 
me vault forward real quick. Just heal you. Leave that hidden cloud behind. I'm trying to heal Genos. He's not letting me. <laughs> Keeps running. Ooh, here. Shields. Shields. Those are more effective than heals late game. Yes, there you go. Alright, we're staying alive. We're staying alive. Might try and hit a wicked stun on Yag here in a sec. Oop. Ah, there was a Genos up there. I'm dead. <laughs> Couldn't get out of that. And... Yeah. That's GG. They got two of us. Can't deal with that Yag. Well, we physically don't have enough DPS for that. And everyone's dead. Okay. Do they have the rights for that? I don't know. <laughs> That's a bit sketch. <laughs> Oof. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. Bad, that's bad. But I don't think Moji is weak at all. We'll see the stats, how much I actually did. Maybe maybe I'm misguided here, but... Uh, yeah, no, we did 103,000 healing. 57,000 shielding as well. That's pretty good. That's a lot of shielding for a support to do. And when you combine that, stack that onto the healing value, it means that I gave my team 160,000 hit points. Just raw hit points. That's a lot. And also, another great thing about shields, if you do want to run double support, is that it's not conflicting with your other supports in any way. Because, you know, what happens if Furia heals my teammate when I also try and heal them? Well, some of our healing gets wasted. But if Furia heals my teammate and I give them a shield instead... Then we're really just stacking benefits there. So I think that does end up being pretty strong, although our damage output was horrendous. And I actually ended up doing more damage than Foka, and Foka's the Moji main. Uh, so it seems like if you are going to be focusing on heals like this, you're not going to be doing that much damage. But, of course, someone could try damage Moji out with a damage talent and see if damage Moji feels good. Because, theoretically, she puts out some pretty decent numbers, as long as you're able to focus the enemies properly. So, that's something to investigate as well. Oh, also, man. Yeah. Genos didn't even pick Binary Star and he got top kills on the team. What are we doing? Okay. Yo, tier- wait, that's a tier 3. Hold on. <laughs> that alert did not do that justice. That is a lot. Thank you so much, Definitely Not an Evie Man. You have been so generous recently. What a legend. Okay, um, what do we do now? Also, yeah, I see Foka did do more healing. I did more shielding, though. We ended up being really close in terms of our raw stats overall. Like, I prioritized shielding. He went for Spit Shine, which I think gave him more healing there, as well as Cozy. He had the edge there, and also he did build more for these other buffs. He gave his team movement speed. Movement speed after being healed by Sparkle stacks with Spit Shine, so you should be getting roughly 40% movement speed, 35% movement speed, something like that with Diminishing Returns. So that that does actually seem pretty good. That's really smart. Glimmer, so he still had a good amount of shielding. And Harmonious is also... That seems it seems like it might be a good filler card, because you can run out of your, your Sparkle, and then you can still, you know, regenerate that back up by procking... Magic Shield. There, we're going to see a lot of experimentation with these builds, especially because every single Magic Shield card is actually super interesting. So, that's really cool. Alright. Uh, I think we got time for one more match. I won't play Moji this time. Someone else can play Moji. Uh, I'll just... I don't know what I'll play. I'll figure it out as we go along. So, here we go. Ascension Peak. Wow, go. you're like really good. Holy crap. And five tier one gifted subs, as if a tier three sub wasn't enough. You are insane, and I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Wow, you wow, that filled up really perfectly. good. Okay, yo, we got Erlenmeyer this time. I wonder what Erlenmeyer is going to do with Emoji build. I'm not going to put him on the same team as Foka because I feel like they'll fight over Emoji, and I want I want to see wow, that battle. Wow, you're like really good. <laughs> so, uh, here we go. Let's just. Oh, hello. Someone's moving. Stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> ah! <clears throat> I'm just gonna start the game. Wow, you're like really good. Your wow, Maria. you're like really good. What should I play, chat? Uh, I would test Sati, but I don't feel like it. I suck at Sati, too. Wow, you're like really good. I kind of want to play like damage Genos, but if we have Grok as well, then it's probably... Probably best to... You know what? Let's do Omen. The name's Let's try Omen. Because yeah, yeah, no he got that massive buff, right? 
SRYI have to save the rest of Ooh. my money for my trip this month XD. Trip this month? You going someplace fancy? Going on a world tour? I, I appreciate that so much, though. That generosity is amazing. Maybe I'll take my own trip one day. And that'll be helped out with funds donated by Definitely Not an Eevee Main. Okay, we got Moji, we got the Grok. Omen, Sati, Mako, it looks All like. Right, yep. Let's get this done. All right, and they're going for solo support. Dr. Foka on the Moji. All righty. Well, double tank comp is probably going to crush our poor solo Makoa, but he does have double support. He can still hold on to this, definitely. I have to figure out how to be a good Omen player. <laughs> and that's tough, because I have not played Omen consistently in months, because he's just been so bad. So, yeah, I, I don't know how well this will go, but I will definitely be a lot better this patch than I was last patch, Let's regardless of my actual paid. skill, because he works now. This character works. He functions as a real character. Yes. Uh, we will try the buffed Umbral Lance. It no longer has the fire rate penalty, so it's exactly the same fire rate as the ramped down version of his rifle. You know the one that has the precise weapon shots? It has that fire rate. Uh, and you just permanently have that, permanently reduced spread by 70%. And I think I'm going to pair this with a vanilla that. build. Uh, I think. Maybe. Yeah, this build I think is the vanilla one I want to use. My builds are probably pretty outdated too, so bear that in mind. But I don't want to use more, that's the thing. I want to see just what the base shotgun feels like now. With Umbral Lance here. And we will grab... Uh, probably, I, I guess I'll get some Racker, because they have Fernando and Moji. And let's go. Let's get a feel for how good this damage is now. And yeah, it's also going to be much more consistent shield damage, too. It's all going to be super nice. And look at that consistency. It's almost like the consistency of Old Emerald Lance again. It's basically like they've just restored that talent. Except slightly weaker, but that's okay. More balanced, honestly. And wow, we just get that kill. Nice. Let me throw that up there. And let's see what the damage feels like at that range. We got some fall off. We got some spread. But look at how the numbers are just consistent. <coughs> like, they just work. We weren't all over the place. It was all within a ballpark range of each other. Nice. That's really nice. I'm going to pair this with some buff lethality as well. I haven't tested that yet. I want to see what buff lethality feels like. Five second duration on that movement increase. That's gonna be very fun. Oop, okay, don't mind the roots. Void grip, haha. <laughs> Come here, and boom. Oh, that was just straight up not possible last patch. <laughs> Omen was too inconsistent for that to work. Let's go. And I already have my ult, nice. Let's uh, throw it back. Uh, I don't have a good angle for that. I can grip you through the barrier. Doesn't really work, though. Let me get the Void on the ground. Nice. This already feels like a dream. This is so much better. I hear Inferno Cannon over here. Hello, Imani? Hello? Uh, is she up here? Oh, 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 hello. Oh, that kills me. I don't have an FDR versus that. Should I buy Arcane Warring this match? Terminus is playing Decimation. Fernando has Scorch. Imani damage. You know what? I'm going to unironically buy Arcane Warden. And I can buy Lethality too, because it's nice and cheap. Nice. Oop, hello. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Ouch. Uh, arcane moment. Let's go. Yeah, finally. It's actually useful. So is Imani just up there? Can I put a field up there? No, I can't. She has found a spot. I'm doing damage, though. <laughs> oh, boy. This is so silly. Yo, thank you for the gifty. Three months of tier one to Foxy Katsune. That is awesome. Uh, here, take this. Boom. Die. Oh, I wasn't able to get him off the map quite. Right. That sucks. Uh, oh, I got rooted. Is Amani behind us? Oh, yeah, she is. Hello. Okay, you know what? She's just gone. We need to, just, we need to still stay up here and help Makoa. Can I throw you off the map? No, I can't. I watched XSTV's video. I should have put the uh, the throw distance card at level 5 since Sentinel counters that now. That's just kind of disgusting. 
Wow, for an, or, uh, Terminus got wrecked. Ooh, boy. Run away. Uh, please don't kill me. Oh, look at that healing. Just burst it up, my emoji. Alright, let's just not get hit by that. Continue to try and spam. I mean, yeah, it's not crazy damage at this range, but it's still just, it feels better. And it is better. Like, this is, this is very nice. I like it a lot. Alright, oh, she's a filthy coin spammer. Can you stop? Oh, that void did not place where I pointed it at all. Oh, okay. Oh, she's up there, isn't she? And I am not going to do enough damage, even if Sati gives me a boost. Because the dragon does a lot of damage. Okay. I feel like I've barely gotten the use out of Lethality, but that's because the Imani is playing so squirrely. And I'm kind of struggling to get kills in the early game. Moji heals with Fernando Terminus on the team. It's a lot. A lot to deal with. You fool! I have Arcane! Ha! Huh? He's happy about only 250 at that range? Yeah, well, Cardio Vic main, it's a shotgun. It's not supposed to do that much damage at that range. But, you know, previously he'd be doing in the double digits. And up in close to medium range, like, you know, this far away from Akoa, we're still consistently doing, you know, 450. And that is, that is good. That is really good. Because previously it was all over the place. You'd get 500, then 125, then 63, then 200. So that's, that's just a lot better. Hmm. Alright, well, I can't quite upgrade my items yet. I will just continue to wait for that. Let's try and notice a bit more of this lethality. It gives me 40% movement speed for 5 seconds after getting an elimination in. And uh, it's that duration that got improved. So... Ah. Yeah, like, we get an el elim right there, and look at how long we're able to extend lethality. We get it procced again. That's like a good 8 seconds of lethality I just got there. And if we can get another kill... Boom, it procs again. And this is a really consistent buff. And I can actually walk all the way over here before it finally expires and get in range with Imani. That is dope. Alright, let me come up here. Oh, she is running very far away. Okay. She is merely a distraction. So, I have an idea. Let me pop here. And goodbye. Wait. No, I didn't mean literally goodbye. Where did you go? You disappeared. Okay. Aw, oh, man, she's immortal. There we go. Wait out the ults. And we're fine. I'm flanking a bit, though. Oh, Foka, why did you peek that? No. Oh man, I'm just a cleanup crew back here. Let's uh, pick you up, get some burst damage. Dead. Yes. And I can reposition up here. Lovely. I can't wait to see what that feels like at level 3. I'm going to max that out. As soon as possible. Oh, she hit that? Okay. Uh, yeah, max that. And get Arcane Warning, too. Beautiful. I hate spending my hoard, but we should make an I think Lethality is just in the perfect spot now. Like... No hello? Okay, oh, you're using that spot. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it's just, it's consistent, it's the right price, it's the right effectiveness, it's all so wonderful. Ooh, nice. And look at that consistent damage, and we snipe her. That was not possible last patch. <laughs> Oop. Ah, oh, I can't throw you away. She can still cancel it with her scamper, it seems. Alright. Oh, poor Grok. And she's gone. Ah, uh, yeah, let's just keep ignoring that. Oof, and unbound. Jeez. We just throw that there. Near their spawn. Oh, I'm dead. Wait, I'm not dead! Arcane warding! Yes! Arcane Warning! Best item in the game! <laughs> Hello? Wait, she actually gets that. We don't have pierce damage. Oh my gosh. Okay. Ah! My goodness. Uh, that was that was pretty smart. Well played. Now that, that, that is... That is a bit silly. I like abusing this map, but holy crap, that is like... How do you even do that? But she outranges me too, but you know what? Maybe I could take her out? No, <laughs> I can't kill her. 
This is where we need old Umbral Lance to come back so I can actually kill him on when she's standing on a literal mountain like a goddess. Oh, man. Okay, let's get back out now that I have been sufficiently spawn camped. Moji's trying her darndest to keep Mako alive. Let me get some damage into Sati here. There we go, dead. Nice. Look at that movement speed bonus. Oh, it lasts so long. Oh, that is so nice. Uh, I'll just grip you, send you that way. Let me get a Gord here on you. Try and do some more damage. I need a touch soon. Might die for this, but I'm going to try it. Ah, uh, it doesn't proc over time. Okay, I'm lucky. Voluntarily spawn camped. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's uh, that, that might be a bit too far. That's a bit too high up. Like, you can get yourself lodged inside of this mountain there and you can stand on top of the trees close to point and you can stand in the windows i think that's all reasonable most characters can access that you can still deal with them if they do that if you don't have long range that that spot up there is a little bit harder to deal with i need to ult up there oh god <laughs> okay spy record two for the muji for the fernando and Let's see about capping this point again. I'm 18 and 7, which is not bad considering I absolutely suck at this character. Okay, once again, what's up with that pool? I pointed it past the statue and it landed at the statue instead. That's not what I want. Alright. Well, let me try throwing this here. And maybe they walk back into it. Slash, I throw them into it. Oh, it expired too quickly. You know, in hindsight, I probably should have done that when I had my grab up. Like a not idiot. Oh, I'm dead. Does she at least get the terminus? She does. Good. I was horrendously out of position. <sighs> Come on, guys. Stay alive. Use those totems. Use those area heals. Come on, Moji. Just womp. Womp them. Boom, boom. Oh, well. Uh, she's getting ulted. I think Moji will be okay, but Fernando's in danger. Or Mako, I mean. You got Lethality proc, though. Yes. Yep, yeah, do some damage. Let me get this Fernando real quick. I avoid grip the wrong person. I still get the proc, though. I still get the elim. Yes. I am so fast. Gotcha. All right, where's Imani? Come here. I'm a speed demon. And you're in range now. You can't stop me. I have arcane warding. Oh, 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 oh. Arcane warding, please. I'm alive. I'm alive. Earl and Meyer. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yo, arcane warding is actually getting huge value this match. I'm not going to lie. Normally it's trash, but I mean, when you have that much ability damage on the team, you might as well buy it, right? And it's cheaper than arcane or uh, armor plating too, so like, there's that. Easier to justify in comparison now. My GF won't let me watch Aww. you, so I guess he'll watch the rest tomorrow on the <laughs> boss Chanel. Yeah, go go attend to your girlfriend, you lucky man or woman. I don't judge. <laughs> uh, Hey, come here, Sopsy. Oh, I got a Grok ult. Please die. Does that kill you? Oh, it doesn't. There's a Fernando ult. Okay. Uh, here, take this. Never mind. <laughs> Ow. Run! No! Okay. Woman friend? What? Yeah, people have girlfriends and paladins? Didn't know that was a thing. <clears throat> uh, ooh, Grok's dead. Alright, we need to group up right now. They're still kind of pushing. Let me throw that down. Ooh, I got an idea. Trapped. Oh, well, I pulled him out of position. So he still should die from that in the end, right? Nope, never mind. I have been disabled for three seconds. Thank you, Muji. <laughs> I guess Omen can still be disabled after all. <laughs> can still have his abilities not work. Oh, boy. All right, nice. Yo, Satyult clears both of them. I can take out Terminus for you. I am so fast! Man, that feels good. Dude, lethality is so nice now. Still kind of a niche item, because you have to snowball for it, but man, it feels good now. Okay, oop, hello. Run away! Stealthy just jumped off the map. I think she was going to try and get the Frostfire Glide back, but mistimed it. Aw, oh, you still live that. Okay. You keep putting some more damage into you. Need to be a little careful here. Uh, yeah, let's back up slightly. 
Ooh, I could have had him off the map there. Here, Monty. Uh, go back there, please. Why are you so low? Let me throw that right there. Let's just see what happens. Uh, they all push forward and nobody dies. Okay. Yeesh. Does the expend ammo mean, like, shoot it directly into an enemy or shoot 500k ammo? Oh, it's just spamming ammo. I would recommend not worrying about the 500k ammo trial because you will literally be playing ROM for, like, 40 hours. It's a stupid quest. They should honestly just auto-complete it for everybody at this point. Because no one in their right mind should complete this quest. <laughs> it's a waste of time and it's soul-draining and it's just it's bad quest design. I wouldn't worry about it. But if you did want to complete it, then spam Rom, spam Ruckus, spam Koga. And apparently some people are reporting, as Delta says, that it doesn't work and it'll reset at 100, so even if you complete it, it won't work. Okay, uh, let's do Arcane 3 since it's been so helpful this match, and let's try and win this game with buffed Omen. Even if we win or we lose, this is still definitely proving the point that Omen is so much better now. He's actually consistent, and that means a lot for his playability as a character. So, if you were an Omen player who was disappointed by the fact that this guy sucks after Umber Lance got gutted, he's, he's back now. He's perfectly reasonable, and that's great. Even if our team is getting clobbered right now, please stay alive. Save Grok! Oh no, they're all gonna die. No! Oh wow, they are marching for our Sati right now. Oh boy. I'm not gonna be able to outrange this Sati. She does more damage than me at range. We have to play it carefully here. Oh, I got shields from OG. Let's go in. Uh, throw that down. Rip you. No Shatterfall, please. Alright, that's the Sati diff. I can get Terminus here. And... Oh, okay. This is fine. Gord. Grip. Throw him away. Dead. Alright, we're still on this. And we can now reposition. I don't think the Grok was necessary, but... Okay. Ooh, nice hook. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Alright, Moji. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my hardest. Alright, I can hit her. Yes, cancel the dragon. Alright, good. We're safe. Can we throw a random ult on point? Oh, it didn't throw her at all. She didn't get knocked back. Okay, at least she dies. Thurman said he's gonna ult. Alright, Mako has to contest with his ult. Make sure we're on it. Oh man, the Satis are popping off. I'm not doing anything. Hopefully that Terminus dies. Or that whoever it was that got hooked dies. Fernando, he's so low. Alright, he's dead. Grip to mess you up, but Terminus is on me. I think this is the end. Makoa's gonna die. And we don't have touch. Oh man. I think part of this loss is the fact that I suck at this character. Oh, yeah. Owen's still very good now. I don't know if he'll be meta or what. Like, I really can't predict that. But he's fixed now. He works. And that's the most important thing at the end of the day. I got 12 kills, 107,000 damage. I didn't go positive, though. I only broke even, 12 and 12. Sati did a lot better than me on the kills. I did slightly more damage. Makoa did a lot of damage. Heck yeah. And, yeah, in terms of the numbers, jeez, oh, look at Moji. 49,000 shielding, 120,000 healing, and Erlmeyer actually managed to do a lot more damage than I did last match. He got 9 kills, 51,000 damage, and also look at Foka. Not nearly as many kills, but still 44,000 damage, 27,000 shielding, and then boom, 157,000 healing. So I don't think we have to worry about support Moji being weak. That's good. If anything, we have to worry about her being too strong, but honestly, I'm not sure that's the case either. I don't feel like she was particularly oppressive in these two matches that I played. But there's a chance that I could be wrong, and there's also a chance, of course, that when we actually try seriously to come up with a crazy team comp on Moji, like, I don't know, get Moji, New Genos, Torval Pocket on the same team or something like that, maybe, maybe you could create some crazy, scary stuff. I don't know. Obviously, we have to test all that. But, yeah, I mean, she is feeling pretty good as a support, honestly. Let's check the loadouts real quick, just because I'm curious. Uh, sparkle capacity... I'm sorry about the Imani thing, dragon dragon face. <laughs> Don't worry, Stealthy. Now everyone knows about it, and it'll be patched. Uh, he did movement speed on Sparkle. 
Slow on Sparkle. Okay, so he was going for the hybrid movement speed stuff with Spitshine. All right, and then Foka, I believe... No, he did test a different build. Okay. So, still cozy. Going for ultimate charge. It looks like the ultimate charge wasn't super good, because he only got two kills. Uh, or at the very least, he wasn't able to confirm the ult that well. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what was going on there. But yeah, movement speed on Sparkle still. It's interesting. I do have to wonder if Symbiotic is really the play. Because here's my thought, right? Let me Let me just go to the shooting range real quick. My idea is, like, what if instead of doing that, you could do, like, a hybrid of two cards and end up being more effective? Although it would also be a bit more skillful. So the idea is, like, yeah, we do this, and instead of greater good, we do harmonious, like this. And we basically, like, we do harmonious and we do glimmer. My, th my idea is, all right, we spam. There we go. Spammy, spam, spam. Then do this. I regenerate a full bar, and then we go back to doing that. We get the cooldown reduction. And then, yeah, we do this. That's totally feasible. So you can do, like, a, uh, a thing like that. Make it, make it work a bit better with a bit of Kronos. And... I feel like that would be more effective. It is also more loadout points, but... You know, those loadout points also get you more shielding, too. So... Yeah, that feels like a really smooth setup. Might be worth investigating, but uh, we'll have to save that for tomorrow. So, Moji without Harmonious is unplayable solo. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, the regen is going to be super important. But yeah, that's all for tomorrow. I do have to end off for today. I know, not quite the long stream you guys wanted, but well, we had to start late. I have things to do. So, yeah, I have to make the, the, the video. <laughs> I have to cut all that up and get it ready for YouTube. So, yeah, we're going to drop it here. Uh, we will probably stream, I don't know whether I'll stream on Saturday or Sunday, depending on how things work out. Uh, it'll be one of those two days, and if we're lucky, maybe it'll be both days, but we will definitely play the PTS again. So make sure you're following here on Twitch, make sure to check out the YouTube channel and the Discord server, uh, especially the YouTube channel if you don't want to miss out on any of the, uh, you know, the content that you didn't see here on Twitch, right? Uh, and yeah, lastly, if you want to support the channel, then go over to the Nexus. You want to buy this new Moji skin, buy the new Furia skin, or the new BK skin, well, you can head on over to Nexus.gg, buy crystals here, and support the channel directly, and it's officially affiliated with Evil Mojo. So, yeah, it's a nice way to support the channel, keep me doing what I'm doing, I'd really appreciate it. With all that being said, let's go raid somebody who's still streaming the updates. Uh, Alright, chat, who do we want? I'm gonna do a poll. Because we got three options here. Who to raid? We have Nerd, XSTB, and Alley. I'll give you one minute to decide. Go! Who gets a massive dump of like 120 viewers probably when the raid goes through? <laughs> the fate of the world is in your hands here. Mm. Mm. All right, eight votes in, only eight votes. Come on guys, we can do better than this. Yeah, there you go. All right, we're halfway done. Halfway done to make your voice heard. 30 more seconds. 25. All right, you got a quarter. You got a quarter of a minute left. 15 seconds. Go! We got about... Just under... Okay, we got 20 votes in. 5, 4, 3... Two, one. Ah, oh, all right. It's close. Whoa, hello. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Nerd has won by two votes. So that's who we shall raid. So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Like I said, we'll be live this weekend with some more PTS content, so stay tuned for that. And I will see you all next time. Peace out.